of but even then look at what's happening right now we've seen him for the longest time practicing variation three frost, frost yeah for at, pretty much right after ect went straight to the lab with frost yep. and has been playing her ever since but now we're stick with it, man, because that character is a problem. He's gonna go right okay. back to it, like. Okay, so he is gonna go with variation three. It's the mind games, dude. It's the mind game. I respect it. At this point, Me? he wants to be able to do really well. I'm going hidden cursor. I'm putting a blindfold on my opponent. <laughs> I'm gonna freaking play uh, ring around the rosy, and then we're gonna anything to confuse him. Yeah. But now, this is gonna be. Pretty much the debut for Hayate's Frost here in the pro competition. So I'm really interested to see how this plays out. But he's going to be going up against Warlock Shang Tsung in the form of El Kukoi. Right, right off the bat, he's going to show the powers of the jump threes in this game, trying to get the blood frame. Now Warlock has been really kind of the favorite variation to play if you're playing Shang Tsung. Uh, Soul Eater has been seeing a little bit of love, but it's just not quite there. But this defensive style that Warlock can put onto the table is just... It's really hard to deal with. Oh, yeah. Especially the space control Warlock uh, deal. The Health Sparks, man? Health Sparks is a problem. Wow. Not getting the, the conversion off of the down two. He was high enough to get it. He didn't get it. Well, you know what? I like the pick from Hayate. Having that little extra mobility to work with with Variation 3 Frost as far as that Frost, that dive bomb goes, could really help Mouse get around this uh, defensive line. Yeah, for sure. And when you really think about it, if you go all the way back to, uh, what was the character he played in MKX? Uh, Takeda. If you go back to uh, Takeda, look at his normals, Frost kind of reflects on that. The whole long range spacing he likes to play. The essence is definitely still there, and especially mm -hmm. with the augers that it just kind of oh, controls. Oh, it's an added that bonus mid. right there. Plus 72 augers? Bruh. But I mean, look at El Kukoi sitting up round one, going up against Hayate. Yeah, he's going up against uh, the Sorcerer, the Sorcerer right now. And that is matchup knowledge right there. He knows that the, he can use Hell Sparks as a punish for Frost's projectiles. And he's he's okay with going with these little bits of trades. The damage is going to be in his favor. Yeah, look at that. Just like that, uh, Hayate's going to even out the life with the zoning. Look, look Shang Tsung's going to get a little bit of it back with the life still grab. I like what I like what Hayate is doing with those cross bombs. The, the active frames on them is pretty much keeping El Kukoi locked down and forcing it to not really throw out as many corpse drops as he might want. Yeah, and you know that's one thing. The corpse drop that's something you don't want to trade with nor take on chip. That duck was disgusting. That was insane. That was disgusting. Beautiful play by Hayate, answering back with the second round. Still alive in this set. Let's go. What a trade. God, he's gonna bust some frost shots out. We're seeing a lot of wake up rolls out of El Kukoi, and it has been working out for him. it! But he's not following up with it. Hayate gets to hold on to his defensive meter. That's a best case scenario for him. Yeah, I don't know uh, why El Kukoi is advancing so much on him. He should just stay away and keep playing the zone game he's playing right now, because he's winning in the, the, the trade and the chips. And you see now, El Kukoi is trying to get away from him. Down four health sparks, Hayate not biting. Oh my god! It's a damage, and now he's gonna get opened up. He's gonna keep him standing. Dude, these mids are killing El Kukoi right now. He's just coming in relentless with the head pressure. Plus frames. And he's just trying to open up Hayate by any means necessary. Virtually oh, the same on dang. life lead. And just as I say, El Kukoi finally gets some damage on the board, sitting with the life lead. Has the resource lead as well. Using the jump in, he's gonna get the conversion! It's not gonna kill, but Hayate doesn't have a lot of resources. No defensive meter at his disposal. Dude, one hit up him, it's a fatal blow! Why did he let it rip? No. This is this is gonna hurt. Oh. Gonna that was a costly mistake by Hayate Yo. not going for that fatal blow. My heart hurts, man. I'm a little nervous right now because the first and two setting, your boy Hayate. Yeah. This is it. And you heard Shang Tsung? It has begun. First and two MK11. Classic line. But now we're seeing. Aaron Black. A very Sing rough soon. situation out of Hayate. Holy Sly cow! Being that we just talked about how he spent so much time with Frost lately. Oh, he goes right back to, to your boy. He's going Aaron Black. He's going back to Aaron Black, but the confidence, the no longer having confidence in what you considered your main in the beginning, and now being forced to go back on this. I, I hope he's ready for this matchup. El Kukoi's in a really good spot right now. He's ready, man. We're talking about Hayate over here. He is ready to give him the rodeo. Now, El Kukoi has been known to play other characters as well, correct? Yes. So El Kukoi uh, has a plethora of characters that he can pull out at any moment. But we're just going to see one more if Hayate takes this game. But but this is Hayate we're talking about, right? You know, the, being so comfortable with a character 
Oh, as Aaron Black, just from all the experience that he's had, it could still work out in his favor. He's getting hit with the mix right now. El Kakui is looking like he might be running away with this one. Okay, the drop kick. Gonna get the good blocks in. The cancel poking right out of it. He's not respecting it. El Kakui smells blood. Cool. Nice little jump there, whiffing the grab. Hayate force off of his defensive meter. We're seeing a much more aggressive Hayate right now as compared oh, to what yeah. we saw him with Frost. Beautiful punish from Hayate. The down two, these guys are savage right now. Who's gonna let the fatal blow rip for the round win? They both have it active. El is just trying to open him up, going for the oh. offensive shimmy. the back grab. I'm not gonna kill. This is Chip in the, no, wait, what? No, you can't. Do that. He risked it all for that. And while I respect the attempt, El Kukoi had the presence of mind to know that something was coming. Off to the block low, and here we are. Set point for El Kukoi going up against Hayate here in pools at oh NEC. Oh my god. Get him with the slide, the jump kick on Wake Up. El Kukoi, he said, You're not gonna win this! Beautiful flawless walk up, too, by Hayate. Definitely looking to feel a little bit more comfortable in this matchup. Just misses the punish there. Very good. He just let it out short. Didn't want to get flawless blocked. He feels a player at Hayate's caliber will flawless block these, these okay. gaps. A temporary mirror match right now. Oh, a nice block by Hayate on that slide. This is going to do a lot of damage, but more so the more oh! the punish on the more fact. This is it. He's got him on the knockdown corner position, throwing the cantato to the back of the head and the gunshot. Let's go. And now Hayate. Answering back, goes for a little bit of a mix with that, with the gun stance. But now, putting El Kukoi, he's putting the pressure on him right now. Oh, good gunshot. Coming in with the kicks. No bullets left for Hayate in the form of his rifle. El Kukoi's just trying to open him up right now. He's going for little bits of damage between the down fours and the back three down four. Yeah, this match is getting too heated right now. Hayate fighting for his life, fighting to stay in the winner's side right now. Oh, punish that! Not gonna get it. What a cancel this guy's putting it all on the line here. There you go, finally opens up Kukoi with a 2-1, forcing him to get off of his defensive meter. Kukoi needs to get out of this corner Dude, if he this wants is a chance. Crazy. Once he starts doing the back twos, it's scary because it's like, what's gonna happen? Which in the end, getting really close. Good blocks. He's going down to the wire right now. Hayate holding his match, his winner's life by a thread. El Kukoi needs to be careful. He's throwing out a lot of projectiles, but Hayate has that fatal blow at the ready. Kukoi going in. Oh! Misses. He should have just did the fatal blow after. Plus frames. Another one. He missed both of them. He's going to win it as well. Dude. No. Oh, that was the scariest scramble I've ever seen. I could count on one hand how many drops there were on both players. Yo, my man, Luckily, what is going on here? I don't know. What is going on here? Like. Yo, he dropped the two punishes from the grab. Nearly costed him the loser side right there. Hayate, wow. Now, El Kukoi, he's going to try to stay poised. He's going to stick with Warlock Shang Tsung, which I think is the right call because realistically, he was playing that matchup really well. Unfortunately, just made a few couple mistakes. Hayate making some crazy reads, jumping out of plus frames, getting away from that grab attempt. Oh, and here we right go. off the start. How do you get hit with the raw? The raw! Listen, in a game number three, this early on in pools, it's time to let just everything Word. out. Word. Go goes with the 4-2 stagger. Okay, good block on the roundhouse. The, the rodeo kicks. Oh, busting the shots. Gonna put him in the left side of the screen. A poke. He said, get away from me. You got me in the corner right now. I don't want to be here. And he's just gonna, this relentless this pressure. This beat down from Hayate. He said, you had me in near loser side. Okay, this could actually do a lot of damage. It's gonna force Hayate off of, off of his defensive meter. This is where Kukoi has to go in. He doesn't have the life lead. He needs to start dishing, dishing out damage now oh, while Hayate doesn't have a breakaway. Went right into the back two. Oh my God, he's gonna take it. Hayate reversing positions right now. He is the one that is in the loser's threat. Round Your boy Kukoi. Kukoi, Kukoi. And even though Hayate started with Frost, after all the work he's been putting in, he still seems more comfortable with Aaron Black. But right now, El Kukoi getting some nice damage on the table. 23% and That's a corpse a drop trade, which is definitely in his favor. Oh, drop kick again. 
I like how El Kakoi is switching it up now. He's going a lot more defensive. Pump faking like he's gonna go in. Goes for a little oh, bit of damage. I didn't expect him to match up. Dude, look at the spider in the background taking a peek of the action. <laughs> oh my god! Just he's four out. plus frames. This is insane. It, 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 Hayate's having trouble opening up El Kakoi. Bro, I feel the tension right now. It is hot in here. He's okay. gonna grab tech him. Hayate goes for the breakaway. He wants to make this work. This is gonna be the back grab. Gonna buy him some time, slowly building up a resource and trying to even out this life lead. Gonna back away real quick, throwing the health parts right now. You know, this is his round to take. No! Wait, his life is melting away. The plus plus again. He's he gonna do out it. of it. Is this gonna kill? No, no, no. He's gonna have a slitter of life. A slitter. But now just the oh, wait. My God, this is it. This is it. They are to the end. 1-1, one, one. El Kakoi versus Hayate. What is happening, Big D? Help me. That, that was the easiest way to close out that round. He knew the poison was coming, just went for the Hell Sparks. We are sitting here in a round three situation in game number three. El Kukoi has the chance oh, to point off. Hayate into Luka. 30% crushing blow. This is it. Kukoi, I can't even say the name right right now, bro. This is crazy. I was going to call him Kukoi, Kukoi, Kukoi. <laughs> he goes for a four grab. Oh, the dynamite. Ayate, he's walking him down slowly. Oh, he's got hit with that corn shot. Why is it so big? That damage is really going to add up. That that projectile does so much damage. But now El Kukoi Good. in Grab ten. the corner again. Rolls away. He's going to back up here. There's no way he wants to deal with Hayate up close. But he's still going to stay there. Oh, my God. Hayate, this might kill. No. He no couldn't fight. do an ender. Just one more touch. One more touch is gonna do it. Oh! Who's it gonna be? He's it's over! over! It's Big D Y! Into the fatal blow, and this will certainly be enough. El Kakoi pulling an upset early on against Hayate. And I just, I, I can't, man. I can't do this. I just can't. That was. The smartest way, if looking back at that second round where Hayate had it, it was over. He put down the poison, and that was it. El Kukoi throws out the Hell Sparks, <laughs> managed to pull it all the way back. I need a breather, man. That's too much. That's Yo, just too much. This is game three. That was game three. That was our third Yo. match here and you in know the what, first block. You know what's pool. funny about these tournaments, dude? We we go on to them, right? We go. We had ECT. We, uh, what was the tournament before that? Was it CEO or something? Before ECT? At, before, yeah, before ECT. No, CEO was a long time ago. But regardless, I mean, we have seen these matches get progressively more close yes, early on. That's what I'm going to say. Like, these tournaments, it's like they just keep getting more stacked. And you got to understand, with the points involved, this is do or die. Where's Hayate in these points? Okay, he's eighth in points, so I mean, Hayate's he's, kind of safe. He's yeah, kind of safe. Yeah, but it's still not a position where you want to no, be no, in. No, 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 of course not. I mean, because when you think about it, these guys are not only here, they're, they're here for the points and for the money, too. You know, Netherrealm throwing that real nice pop bonus in here. People definitely want to get a, a piece of that. Now, if you're El Kakoi, you're feeling really good right now. So oh, my God. I can't wait to see 100%. what else he, he comes up with. Because like we said, he has other characters at his disposal, but his Shang was looking mad strong. And Look as we move forward, Furious we have oh, Furious Killer. The guy we were talking about earlier that... Funny enough, pulled an upset against Hayate way back at CEO with pre-buff Kotal Khan. <laughs> now Kotal, <laughs> as we have talked about before, Kotal is basically That's especially violent. especially Bjorn. Hayate's now they bring Hayate's killer up here after Hayate got killed, bro. Come on. That's just not They even did this fair. purposely. <laughs> the Dark Souls boss, as uh -huh. you've mentioned, is Kotal Khan. Yeah, it is in Bullock, but Ascension still got a lot of love. The character as a whole <laughs> is completely different than what we saw Wait, uh, in Furious previous. Wait, Pillow plays Bullock? I thought he was the Ascension player. He plays a little bit of everything. Okay. I, I would think like it's to mainly Ascension, though. But now he's going to go up against Sonic, who has been really, like, in the conversation here moving into is, NEC. Is he going to pick Collector? This is it. My heart is racing. We're about to see the highest level of Collector play. Collector. He's gonna do it. Oh my god! Boss is going to do it. Now, what's really cool is that 
in the form of Fox, right? Yeah. They've been able to kind of have this little conversation. Oh, is Raiden potentially top five? Is Collector potentially top five? We're gonna be able to see if they can put those words into action here. Oh, what? This is gonna be a big statement for Fox. Look at that. You know, Furious Pillow skin. This is Conan the Barbarian right now. He said, Conan the Barbarian. I do not want to fight you. And listen, I will slaughter you, Collector. I am so excited. Go. I've been waiting forever to see Fox's Collector. And now it looks like they're just going to go straight into it. Let me tell you, I'm not only commentating this match, I'm taking notes as well. But Let's now, go. Furious Pill, like you said, is going to go with Ascension Kotal Khan. Okay, the down three. You know that down three from Collector is savage. Okay, Boy. Flawless Block up three. Furious Pillow already showing a lot of solid play, but Fox opening him up with the forward one. And this is party time right here for Collector. He puts you in a position where you gotta deal with command grab, Okies, everything. Fox trying to get that space with a down Jumping four. Up and hitting him with a neutral jump one. Oh, oh my god, god. the hit confirmed. Okay. He Fur said, give me the blood. Yo, he's coming in heated right now. Conan the Barbarian. I like what I'm seeing already out of Furious Pillow. Oh wow, nice reversal command grab by Fox. That was beautiful. Good plus frames on the jump kick. He's gonna knock him right out of there, Sonic Fox. He said, you wanna play like that? Let's go! Okay, this is gonna do a lot of damage. Furious Pillow, due to that roll away, is not gonna be able to break. Optimal! No, the command grab would've been optimal, but he went for the corner carry. I respect it. Yeah, Furious Pillow, out of yeah, 15 seconds on the clock. Holy cow. Fox knows. Yo! No! Oh, that's going to kill. Furious. 100 pillow. Sticking the giant bacon sword into his stomach. He said, talk to him. Boom. Bruh. And throws him right back into the mid-screen. That was a best case scenario for Furious pillow. Now, Fox, we all know the type of player that they are. He's Look, a man grab. Look at how sneaky Fox is right now. A little devious Fox. And here we go. Fox. Already seeing adaptation. We're seeing a lot more command grabs. That command grab out of Collector is 10 frames. Super fast. God. Look at, did you just see how he stood over his body looking at him with fear? He said, I'm gonna kill you, Collector. You're mine. Now, Furious Pillow gets the back grab. Whoa. Escape failed as well. The next grab that connects will do a lot. Very good. No conversion on the jump kick. He's got Furious Pillow in the corner right now. Sonic Fox. Very good stuff. He tried to go for the crushing blow. Fox tried to go for the crushing blow. Okay, this could be the start. Is throwing him into the corner. Furious Pillow. Nice little scout there by the standing that floor. Was dirt. Wait, but a drop. Not out of it just yet. Furious Pillow. Oh! Chance. One more touch from Furious Pillow, and wait! He could have confirmed and killed him! But instead, he's gonna get the grab, saving the crushing blow as well. Dude! Wait, who has it loaded? Was it Fox or? Both of them now. Oh Both of them have a God. crushing blow grab at the ready. Oh, yo, Furious Pillow came here, prepared for Knock Not in Blood to be spilled! What a good crushing blow, putting him in the corner position. All that up to getting stuff very smart by Fox. Teleport out, out of the way. Oh my god. That is a costly input error for his this, pillow. Dude, this is gonna hurt. We're looking at about 31% right there. Yo, Sonic Fox is on an elite pressure right now, but Furious Pillow gonna fight his way out of there. He's Fox gonna meter burn it? Oh, he has no meter to, to get the extra damage. You know, Fox even just kept it on break. Wait! Wait! He could have woke up with the fast frames. Okay, this could this could be something special here. Now he still has the grab crushing blow, but the Good. down two scout by Fox. The explosive down two crushing blow. Yo! Oh, God! I was not ready for that. Brutality combo from Sonic Fox. Let's go. Here's Pillow was like, yo, that was cool. I just got body, but that was cool. <laughs> That did go to the third round, so you have to give a little bit of respect to Furious Pillow. That's not something a lot of players can do going up against Fox. No. I like what I was seeing from Furious Pillow, but just a lot of drops. Those drops were killing him. And also, there was a moment where Sonic Fox, uh, he, mi he missed time like a meteor or something. And Furious had a perfect time to wake up and punish him right there, but it didn't happen.
But you know what? He took what, took a second to go back to character select screen. Furious Pillow has a little bit of time to relax, think about what went wrong, and move into this Round game too one. with a completely fresh attitude. And that, that kind of sucks for your boy Furious Pillow, because to be in a position like that on Fox, you really got to take advantage of that. That is the moment you're supposed to thrive, put everything on the line. And again, we're seeing a lot of drops. These are really hurting him. No defensive meter on Fox is going to give Pillow all the opportunities another in the world drop. to get damage, but another drop. It's been drop after drop, yeah. and Pillow needs to tighten up if he wants to make a comeback. Sonic Fox with these optimal combos, the down two into the down one. Oh my god. But it's amazing how Furious Pillow is going neck to neck with the legendary Fox right now. Even despite the drops, he still has a lively, nice tick grab off of the one. Did it it? Yes! Yes! Okay, it's open up by the 4 3 and just goes He's for the dead. go. Okay. Finish it! Yo! Down kick into Praise the Sun! That was perfect if you're Pillow. Now Fox, due to that accidental breakaway, has no defensive meter. Pillow needs to go in. He needs to complete these combos and he needs to deal a lot of damage. Oh, short hop, Sonic Fox. Was he looking for a flawless block or something? Very good stuff. Meter Burn gonna do the side switch, get a little more distance to that corner for him. Go, forward, three, four. You hear all the, the, the people chanting in the back? Go on, oh, go on, oh. Furious Pillow is on the stage to win. That does, I can't believe he got caught out of that trying to whiff punish now. That's terrible. 4 one, finally getting the full combo there. Oh, Fox get off in the me. breakaway. Another tick Go. grab, Furious yeah. Pillow, starting uh, to get the momentum. You can feel it. Got him in the corner. Dude, I just want you to think about, like, do you remember the first game? He almost had Fox, and look at this, continuing the slaughter. Oh, my God. This at guy this, caught him with the 4-4 four, four mace. These drops are killing both of these players right now. Okay, nice little pick up there. Bruh. He's not dead. Not going to kill. And there we go. Chip damage for the win. Now... Thankfully, Fox knew that Furious Pillow used the roll away and didn't have both um, charges of the last breath. So that little chip out was going to work. But if that didn't, that was going to be death. Furious Pillow going in with the down three. Yeah, they're tied 1 1 this game, man. If Furious, like I said, if he had that last game, he would have been in such a dominant position. But instead, Sonic Fox right now is going to launch him with the corner combo. Look at the damage 36%. Collector is damaging him. Go gets the command grab, gonna switch positions here. A little bit of extra damage, smashing him on the head. Still in this. Furious is still in this, people. Do not fall asleep on Bear Head Kordo Khan. Bear Head Kordo Khan. Oh, that is a punish crushing blow to follow up. This is it right here. Another drop. Still has a chance. Oh, the wake up. It's over. Is it's that over. death? Yeah. That has to be death. No. Defensive meter to break away and the fatal blow most certainly will close it out and Fox will advance. This is death times 10. And All it, right. It's really unfortunate to see that because Furious Pillow played so well. I got to give it up to Fur uh, Furious Pillow. We all do. And look, Sonic, relax. He gave you a worthy fight, Sonic Fox. Why are you brutalized? And he takes the bear head for the trophy. Of course. Of course. You know what? I, I understand. I would have done that too. He found the worth. And you know what? Furious Pillow hats off to, first of all, both of the players. Fox played out of their mind. I mean, I am I am actually really Bro, impressed. Can we for just him call him Swag Fox? I'm okay with that. <laughs> Yo, he's I'm so totally swaggy. okay with that. Look, But even now, like, Furious Pillow, he's, Sonic is probably talking to, to Furious Pillow about what went wrong. Yeah. That's the type of person that he's Fox like, is. He's like, listen, Furious, you were trying to hit me with that big bacon sword. And I just ate it up. <laughs> Goodbye. I just, I feel bad because Fierce Pillow played so well, but those drops, you can't make drops like that. That is going to kill you at that level of play. It's just one of those things where when you go up against a player like Fox, one drop, already bad enough. But we saw yeah. time and time again where it was four or five, even six drops throughout even a round, I would even be comfortable you know, in saying. And you just can't let that happen. The drops were too, a little too much. And, you know, it's especially against a player like Sonic Fox. I can't stress this enough. If you're going up against the best of the world, you need to be ready for it, dude. Get the nerves, kick him out of here, and really focus on the match because that is it. Furious Pillow, if he won that first game, who knows what would have happened. Sonic probably would have been tilted. 
He would have been like, bro, this is Conan the Barbarian right now. But you know what? Even more so ass. than that, I would have loved to see what Fox would have done going down a game. Yeah. Because they have so many other characters at their disposal, it would be interesting to see which character would come out next. You know? Exactly. But now we still have plenty more action here in this bracket. Like we mentioned before, we have Perfect Legend in this bracket. We have Gurt in this bracket. We have Chris G, Combat, uh, Doom we saw earlier, and uh, Jelly Jiggler. <laughs> yeah, he's Formerly known as Tweety, so. now goes by Jelly Jiggler. How do you like the name change? Um, you approve? I approve of people making up their own decisions. You know, my own opinion <laughs> is different. But, oh, okay, perfect. So we do have Gur on the screen. As we mentioned before, this tournament is everything. For yes. Gur. He doesn't need to only place top eight. He needs to be farther in the top eight. You can't just play seventh and then make it into the finals. No way. This is one of the things you're going to be hearing a lot uh, from us tonight. Pretty much from us, the other commentators as well. Last chance qualifier is an interesting situation. It is honestly not something I personally would ever want to be put in. No, because wait. then you, if you don't place here, like let's say for example, if worst case scenario, Gur has to make it to LCQ. You have to win that and then your reward is going up against the first seed in the LCQ. Not exactly the most favorable situation you want to be in. Yeah, so Gur yes. wants to place here. There's definitely too much on the line at LCQ. I, I agree 100%. Like wherever that, that's going to take place, whoever ends up going there, there, that's just like everything is on the line right there. There's no second place. There's no third place. It's just first place gets the spot. All right, they're going for the button check right now. And now, perfect. So I've been watching Gur play a lot lately. He's been making pretty much the complete switch over to Eternal, which is one of the new variations that were added along with variation, the rest of the variation threes uh, a couple months back. Uh, we've had a little taste of Eternal uh, from ECT in the likes of Combat who we will, I'm assuming, we'll see at some point very soon. But now that Gur is playing Johnny Eternal, King I'm Gears. interested to see how well he Johnny meshes King. with oh this my variation. God. Gur Johnny with Garrus alone is already Johnny scary. We we have seen that time and time again since the beginning of the pro competition. Yeah, now he has access to ridiculous plus frames. He has access to teleports. He has access to a lot. This man is about to go ham with Eternal Gears. Get hype, people. We got Eternal Gear, and you know what? We might as well just call Gur Gearus because this man came here. It's Gur. Looking like, like the true Gearus. Listen, it is Gearus right now, but he's going up against Shang Tsung. This is Why has been kind of like an, a back and forth matchup. I've seen a lot of people have a lot of different mm. opinions through it. My fate. The grandest but we'll have to wait and see what happens with Gur's new switch to Eternal. Oh, very good. That's the plus frames right off the start. Okay, so this is Arm Kratos. I've heard a lot about him. I'm really excited to see how he goes up. This guy's an online god. Yeah. He's destroyed me in combat league more than 700 times. I'm tired of it. And now he's here in the pro competition NEC 20. He's gonna try to give the works to your boy Gur. See if it happens. Wow, the body splash put the down two away. Arm Kratos trying to go for a little bit of a shimmy into the 1-1. One -one. Oh, good jump kick. He's slowly. Slowly dragging him to the corner right now. Gur, how is he going to get out of this situation? That there is a costly oh. drop. Look at that. Punches to the mouth. He said, you want one? I'll give you another one. We're still seeing drops. That is not that is not something I'm used to seeing out of Gur. Okay, spends an extra bar. Nice little pick up there. Going to force Gur off his defensive meter. And now Arm Kratos has a life lead. But Gur has paid a blow. We know he is not. He's not against just letting it rip. I mean, do you think Gur knowing the position he's put in right now with the points and everything, how this is like last situation stuff, he has to be nervous. Oh, it was a four grab, so it's not going to kill. That's a little bit punish. less damage. He could have got a kill. Yo, he could have got a kill punish right there. That could hurt him in the end. Okay, this won't kill either. One more touch from Gur could make the comeback. Oh, that was so smart. He knew that Gur had no defensive meter for the last breath. That was going to chip out regardless. Arm Kratos. Ay Dios mio. Are you the man? He's got him in the corner right now. Are we going to see the Gurus crushing blow? Punch in the mouth. No, Arm Kratos is going to piano him with the Hell Sparks. And now, even with uh, one of the more recent patches a bit ago, uh, Warlock seems a little bit of a damage up. We still see 25%. That's a respectable amount of damage. And look at all the damage now with Dude, the corpse drops. This corpse dropping right on top of Gyrus's beautiful shiny head. Let's go. What a grab. They go down. Yo, down four low sand gimmick. It's masters. a classic, man. You can't even call it a gimmick anymore because it no. hits so much. 
It really is like a legitimate mind game because then you can move into other sorts of layers. But here we go. This is the question blow. Is it? Yes. Still not gonna kill though. Arm Kratos. One touch in the Fatal Bow will do a lot of damage. Could potentially even kill now. That was actually insane. The sequence that just happened. He tried to do the forward three, but Geras's forward three shut it down. Oh no no, vice versa. Sorry sorry. Opposite. Reverse what I just said. Please. Listen. And thank you. Still way too close for comfort. Granted, Gur got that second round in there. Arm Kratos. It's still playing really well. It always seems to get Gur off his defensive meter pretty much as soon as he gets it, and that's a really good thing if you're going up against a Garrus player. Yeah, look, is he gonna take teleport right out of the corner position? Genius stuff from Gur. He's setting up these clones in such a way he can utilize them perfectly. I like how Arm Kratos is always at the ready. Okay, that's when you know that it's time to bring out everything. Yeah, he's going with the with the low mix, overhead mix. Oh, misses the drop there. That That is really costly. Oh, he got the counter hit. He didn't commit. You know, forward 2-1-2 two, is two, such a great move. Like, even on on, on hit, you can Oh, right there. to the leg, 34%. Gurr stealing the life lead away. Finish it. Is he going to finish it? What is happening? This is war. This is a war. Oh! You knew it was coming. So smart. Roll out of the corner right into the fatal blow. Just barely trip guarded. Arm Kratos. And you could tell by Arm Kratos, he's not happy about no, that. He's not happy. He's analyzing the situation right now. He said, you know what? Gur, you're really good, but it's not over yet for me. I like it a lot. Gur staying composed. Both of them taking a little second to think about the situation that's going on. Let's see if Arm Kratos can readjust. And even though you can look at Gur's expression as well, he's not happy about that either. That is no way. way too close for comfort. We talked about before how Gur is one of the most passionate players that we have. There's a lot riding on his performance this weekend. And you can tell in his face that it's really showing. I'd be shaking right now, bro. I'm shaking already. I would have been pissed myself. Oh, very good stuff. He's got him in the corner. Arm Kratos. We're already seeing a more aggressive arm Kratos coming out of the game. Yes, and did you just see that? Gur hit the flawless block on the jump kick, but did not have no meter to flawless uh, up to it. From what I saw, like I've been saying, I've been seeing Gur. He's been working a lot on flawless blocks, but we haven't seen those reversals come out of him just yet. And arm Kratos is running away with this round right now. A very comfortable life lead. Uh, there's the flawless block. Yeah, he had the meter now. He said, <laughs> there you go. Special delivery. Arm Kratos going for a lot of hop attacks. Gur has got the clone. It's so smart because he can either make it pop. Okay, okay. And when he makes a pop, he is plus. So there is a mind game behind that. that throw Eternal one right Prince. back up. Throw another one up. You go for a low sand trap. It's all frame traps for Arm Kratos. And I love the way he's using it because he'll do that. If he pops it, plus frame, set up another one. If he doesn't pop it, Arm Kratos goes for the advance. Boom, he's on the other side of the screen. It almost seems like Gur is more comfortable staying farther away as a yeah. colonel. Up close, Arm Kratos really has been getting the better of it. Plus frames on the massive hit from you, boy, Arm Kratos. Oh, that was bad. Attempt gone wrong. This is going to do a lot of damage. Going to be able to cash out here. 26%. No, the flawless blocks on these jump kicks. Gur is a machine right now. Hitting You're him in the side of the hip. Again, a lot of drops coming out right now. They, he has to be nervous. You can see it in his gameplay. You saw it in his face earlier. But the forward grab, trying to get some Oki started. Arm Kratos, beautiful defense, not getting opened up by the forward two. And you know, you know that string that uh, Shang Tsung does where he hops on top of your head like a rabbit? That thing is not easy to stop. People are like, oh, there's a huge gap. But you know how many other options Shang Tsung has? Exactly. Very good stuff. Not going to crushing gonna... blow, but it's going to give him that, that life lead he wants. Throws out the clone, and he's opting to back away just a little bit. Has Fatal Blow. We might be able to see it out of Gur. Can Arm Kratos pull it off? He has one more chance to close out. Oh, he didn't game. Killed himself. No, this was just the, that was not it. That was not it. Arm Kratos still alive, still in this. He can still get out of this. Let's see what happens. Fatal blow. Gonna obliterate him for the round. That was the second time that Arm Kratos went for what looks like a flawless block reversal attempt, and it just didn't pay off. Now, granted, that was a really expensive way to close out the round for Gurry. He has no fatal blow to work with here in round number three, so Arm Kratos probably feels a little good about that. But, Gurr backing away. Oh, very good Hell Sparks. He's just putting the advance on him, and there you go. Gonna get a good opening. 
Your boy Arm Kratos smells the blood right now. Gert is in a tough position. You don't want to lose this. You do not want to be tied in a 1 1 situation in a first to two setting. Nice little weird sw side switch there. And that's going to do it. That was a dominant third round. Bro. And the pressure is on. The pressure's on. The pressure's on. My pits are sweating right now, man. I could imagine Gert's. Look at the face right now. Look at the sweat. I see the sweat glistening on the forehead. Listen, I'm sweating. Woo! All right. We're, I think everyone in this vicinity is starting to sweat, man. There's too much <laughs> stress on the line. Even for me, I'm retired and I am stressing Yo, out right now. Dude, I didn't think being behind the mic in the pro setting was going to be this stressful. <laughs> Not much stress. I low key feel like I'm fighting these matches sometimes. Now, he's going to stick with Garrus. Arm Kratos, you can see he feels a little bit more at ease, but this is Girl we're talking about. He's made miraculous comebacks before and granted Gur has had a ton of sh good showing we've seen ninth places across the board top 16 a win even at rtx but he goes to infinite warden now it is no more eternal the gloves are off it is back to the numbers this is it. everything's on the line here both of them tied 1-1 arm kratos showing that he can compete with the best wow what a trade on there but kratos is going to take the bigger damage on that what a short hop on the corpse drop. I like that. And those are the little micro decisions you're going to have to make to stay away from little bits of chip damage. Those are going to add up. The majority of this round has been all chip damage. Nice little scout with a down one. Oh, the grab tech. Bro, this is the original Shang Tsung right now. Oh, and there's the match of knowledge. Flawless oh. blocking that second spark and getting the low sand trap punish. Gonna get a nice conversion off of the hell sparks. Coming in with the snake strikes. Gear is just gonna dash up, grab him with the hammer slam. Thyrax in the back right now being tortured by the manufacturers. Oh my god. Gear has Fatal Blow again. It's just, it is such a scary tool to have. He could have even used it there and possibly closed out the round. Gur, any sort of hesitation is going to make him lose this round. And there it is, opting not to use the defensive meter. And Arm Kratos. Round two. Fight. This is unreal right now. Are we about to see? We, I have to call this an upset, right? It has to be an upset. This is going to be the second upset of tonight. The second upset of tonight, people. Go a little bit of damage on the forward three, two. Oh my In God, that fist! I felt that one right to the face. Okay. Rushing blow, karate chop. He needs to use it. He wants to keep that life lead nice and early, and this should even be able to close out the entire yeah. round. He's taking it. Gonna tie it up one to one. These matches have been absolutely insane. And now both players. This is how it's gonna go. One one. Last round. Fatal blows are ready for both players when the time comes, if it comes. Expect oh to God. see a very slow start to this round. Oh yeah, both definitely. Look at this. He's ducking, waiting for the perfect moment to strike. On Kratos, so he's fishing it out. He said, I need to put the pressure right here. Kerr is feeling the heat. Good, Breaker immediate kicking him away from the sand trap, bro. This is looking really tough for Gurr. No defensive meter to work with. Arm Kratos is all over him right now. The hit confirm off of the shimmy. Almost 26%. The wake up 1-1 one, one punish from your boy Gurr. He doesn't want to lose this. Oh! This could be the comeback! He's gonna do so much damage here. Ah! Oh! Almost 44%! One more time. It's oh! do it! Bro! Arm Kratos sending Gur to losers with the anti-air fatal blow. And Gur. The dream starting to slip away. Arm Kratos walking away with the win. And now Gura has even more work to do. Yo, this is too much. I can't, This is man. too much right now, bro. Are you kidding me? Gur just went out with the fight of the century. This guy was really clinging onto life. And now he's going to be in the loser side with the most cruel. His points really matter here. His points really matter here, man. And then even then, we saw earlier in that third round, Gur had a huge life deficit, but you felt that momentum starting to come back there in that third round. And one little mistake, the jump over, and then Arm Kratos having the reactions to just let that fatal blow rip as the trip guard. And that's what gave him that last little opportunity to close it out. And I got to say, you know, 
Uh, I don't I don't really I haven't been following Arm Kratos like that. I know he is an online killer, but if this is like one of his first majors or something, I gotta give credit to the kid. He came here with the A game. Regardless, you have to call that an upset because Gura has been 100%. really consistent across the board. This is early on. I mean, we have a lot of matches, we have a lot of pools, and then later on the top sixteen. That is a huge statement for Arm Kratos. It was a beautiful performance by both players, but now Gurr. If this he wasn't feeling it before, he's feeling it now. This is the greatest thing ever, though, to be able to sit back here, watch these players play in an offline setting with the pinpoint reactions, you know. That, that's just, it's, it makes a difference. You wouldn't believe it, but it makes a difference. Having those instant reactions right in front of your face, person-to-person -person combat, baby, offline. This and, is it. And if that match wasn't enough to get your heart going, look at these two players on the screen right now. I'm scared. Biohazard, the Kano loyalist through and through. He has been rocking a little bit of Terminator lately, which we actually haven't really had a lot of time to talk about. This is the first tournament where Terminator, Terminator is legal. Wow. And we haven't he's seen gonna pull, Terminator he's gonna yet. pull him out? I'm not sure. I had a chance to speak with Biohazard yesterday. He feels really comfortable with Kano, mainly Ripper. He says he's, he's taken a new approach to what he believes is peak Kano gameplay. And he's going to try and show that here this weekend. But I want to see Arnold. I want to see Arnold. Can I see Arnold, please? Wow. And then on the other hand, Coach Steve, Jackie Loyalist through and through. Now, I was expecting to see a lot more upgraded. You know, that is one of the variations we've been seeing and really been hearing about lately. Out. One of, might be one of the best variations in the game right now. But Coach Steve is going to stick with first round knockout, the comfort zone. And that's all there is to it. They're going to go ahead and straight into it. This is a pools match. Oh, my this God. This is pools. This is not top 32. This is not top 16. This is pools. What a journey these guys are going through right now. Bio versus Coach Steve. Let's go. Starting off the game with a tick throw. Going to put the blades to the back. Very good stuff. Forcing Coach Steve off of the breakaway immediately. Now, Coach Steve should be riding in here with a lot of momentum. He just got top eight at ECT. Beautiful performance. But Biohazard all over him right now. This is the Whoa. relentless gameplay that we're known to see out of Biohazard. But beautiful wake-up buttons by Coach Steve. Yeah, this is it right here. Coach Steve has him in the corner right now. He's going to try to make a, a little life difference here. Very good stuff. Was that a standing two just out of nowhere? Standing two cancel. He tried to make something happen. But, you know... Kano is a maniacal character. Like, literally, he just starts ball rolling all over the place when he has you at low life. He is the epitome of a snowball character. If he gets going, <laughs> it is so hard to stop. And that is Bio's specialty. We've seen it in countless characters in past NRS titles as well. And just look oh, at what's going on right now. Crushing the skull with the kick. Very good whip on it. Coach Steve needs to make this work. This was actually a really fast game. The way, look at his life lead he has. That was so fast. Kano just killed her with his perfect positioning. Biohazard to say. Well, you know what? Bio is Kano now. This is what I expect to see out of Biohazard. He's oh. either going to oh, steamroll you, or it's going to end up being a super long match where he usually doesn't feel nearly as comfortable. But you see that momentum is just so hard to stop. Oh, okay. Steve hey. is going to go right back into it. Yeah, he went right into it. He should have took a second to think about it real quick. Okay, the overhead off the jump in. Down one, another overhead. He's just trying to straight mix her. So a lot more staggers out of Coach Steve. Very smart, very smart. Down one into Kano Ball. Maniac boys. That was a, literally a bait on the up three wake up and then catching him with the follow up, knowing that he wasn't going to be able to break out. A respectable amount of damage oh. as well. We got the interactable in the back to lead up for a nice tick throw setup. Oh, no punish on the Kano board. That is super that, costly. That is really bad, actually. He has him in the corner. One more touch is going to do it for Kano, for Biohazard. That was the last breath. If he makes the comeback on the last breath, I'm going to flip out. But how is he going to be able to do this? He this needs to be able to keep blow. it close. He's going to walk it up. Oh, no. Just no. Oh, my God. He should have went for the fatal blow and gave him a better position with that one. He, he probably would have been one touch away from death. A chip situation instead. And now Biohazard, as quickly as the set has been going on, is already on set point. Going up against Coach Steve, who is a super strong player. But now Coach Guys, Steve has beat. corner control. 
Wow, he saw from the range he threw it. The kick tagging him. Oh no, the head, the headbutt. Very good. Down one into the Kano ball. And another miss punish. There we go. He's grab teched it though. Text after text after text. And okay. with the execution errors, that's going to hurt him. He doesn't have the wiggle room to have those drops. It is not the time for that. No conversion. Coach Steve can make a comeback right here, right now. He just needs to open up Biohazard one more time. That is gonna, no! No, wait! Okay. Dude, he's going for a lot of weird decisions. It's freaking me out right now. A couple moments, he could have killed him there. Coach Steve needs to tighten up a little bit, man. These are, these are way too close for comfort. That was a beautiful whip punish on his down three. Continuing the pressure right now. Coach Steve, another one with the reversal. Gonna launch him with the stanky leg. The stanky leg. And quick little bits of damage like that. That overhead going up to almost 14%. Those will add up. Coach Steve switching positions and is going a lot more for the dirty pressure. Yeah, he's going ham right now. Double jump crossover. Mania. Huge punish there on the whiff. But another drop. Yo, this is crazy. He has him in the corner. This is relentless pressure from Coach Steve right now. This is looking like an onslaught. And that is definitely going to be able to do it. A crushing blow just oh. for style. Are we going to get a, a, a brutality? Let's see it. Please, oh, no. in the drop. Wow. Again with the drop. Can't even give us wow. a brutal, man. But now, I really like the adjustments from Coach Steve there. He, he really settled down. He actually started playing a little more like relentless there. You know, I figured he said, Kano, you want to start ball rolling all over, all over the place? I'm going to give you the same treatment. Take all this sporadic gameplay, baby. Hold it. And it's just like what you were talking about. He switched his gameplay up completely. Coach Steve went a lot. What? Stack. All right, now we finally get to see it. Wow. Finally get to see some Terminator in here. Arnold is on the screen right now. What is happening, people? Now, the big talk with this character, while some people might say that the, the character's neutral is a little bit lacking, this is absolutely another snowball character. He touches you twice, maybe two and a half times, you're dead. It's over. The round is over. Do you think Arnold is at home watching this right now? He's going, yes, kill him, please. If he, kill him. If he isn't, that is a... Can yes, I commentate like Arnold? Yeah, okay, you do whatever you I'm want. I'm going to shoot him with the double pump. Now I'm getting pressured by Jackie Briggs. I hit him with the overhead. Ah, backbreaker. Ah. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm done. All right, so now Dark Fate is the variation with the running man stance, and this is just all mixed. And look at that, completely melting the life bar. First round is gone. <laughs> Chill out. <laughs> Chill out. Yo, what? Wait, what just happened though? Are you kidding me? He's gonna start off with the jump three. This dude, Arnold, has him in the corner right now. Oh no. Coach Steve is gonna get right out of there. Giving him the Muay Thai beatdown. Jackie Brick special. Kickboxing him. And finally gets the full combo. This is the Coach Steve that we're used to seeing. Locking Bio down in this corner. The pressure is too much to handle. Oh now. my god! This. I think I just caught a shotgun shell to the waist. That is going to do a, a considerable amount of damage and now even has the position. Beautiful. That's the full punish right there. Is this going to take the round? No, Breaker. Oh, my God. He shut it down, Big D. Help me. This is not going to kill him. One mix will do it. No goes for the mid. Okay. Ducks both the highs. Has to inch his way in. Needs to be careful. Yeah! Air grab will certainly close it out. And Biohazard with the surprise Terminator pick. Finishing it with the I'll be back breaker. Unbelievable. One of the sickest outros in the game. Why are we skipping it? I want to see the T-800. Yo, but let's go. Really good stuff from Coach Steve, man. That, that was just wild. That was just wild. Dude, every single match so far has been a cannon match. I don't know how much more of this I can take, man. I'm sweating. <laughs> I'm pretty sure my shirt is going to be drenched. Where's the, the napkin? God. But you know what? And we talked about it before, about how Bio was messing around a little bit with Terminator. <laughs> we didn't know if we were going to see it. We saw it, and he took the game with it. And you know what? That shows the type of player, the competitive player that Biohazard is, to have that presence of mind to honestly take that risk and go for a character that he has not been able to spend nearly as much time with as Kano and close it out in such a performance like yeah. that is unreal. And that was that, that was like a speed run. The first game, that was oh, we a, blinked and it was done. That was a, I'll be, yeah. I did a couple Arnold impersonations. He said, "I'm done." 
Doom, and, commentate the match now, Destroyer. And then, They're that's just like what we were talking about. That That is a character that will touch you twice and you are dead. Yeah. But but overhead. Look at what the characters <laughs> that Biohazard's been playing. Injustice 2 was Bane, arguably did the same Yo, thing. You're, you're totally right about that. What he about MKX? Ferritor, he thinks characters is just straight obliterates you, body slams you, and ragdolls you. That's Biohazard for you. Look at this. Okay, so. Go collector. I know there's a Nagnaden, there's a Nagnaden outbreak right now. The collectors are on the loose. PL has been known to play collector, plays a little bit of Kong Lao as well. And now El Kukoi, as we saw earlier, just fresh off of a beautiful upset against Hayate. This is going to be good. Yeah. This could honestly go either way. PL has been putting in a lot of work, has been spending a lot of time with a lot of different variations. At ECT, we saw him bring out uh, variation three Kung Lao. Um, <coughs> arguably doing pretty well, ended up going back to Lotus Fist at some point. Oh man, this is going to be actually wild right now. PL is going to have to go up against one of the dark horses of this bracket, honestly. Kukui? Yeah, he's re now, while we know that he has been a solid player for a while, we weren't expecting an upset like that. Yeah, this is, re this is insane. I don't understand how we got... We have Hayate and Gur both in the loser side of this pool. This is kind of opening the doors for these two guys right here. Perfect Legend and El Kukui, they need to take full advantage of this situation and ride the momentum to winner's finals or something. You you want to talk about pressure if Gur has to face Hayate in losers? To oh my that pool. God! Everybody's I know you want to pull up the bracket to see that if it's going to happen. This is going to be insane. People, go to Smash GG. Find out for yourselves. It's about to be a bloodbath in this pool. The brackets are updated live, so make sure you can check those out. Just type exclamation point bracket. You will be able to see those yes. in real time as we get this next match underway. Button checks are just about done. We are going to see Warlock Shang Tsung out of El Kukoi. And then, like you said, Collectors are out here, dude. I'm telling you, Sonic Fox came through. With the collect, he went to he went to Nagnaden Prime, right? He went to the Nagnada race land. He said, "Listen, uh, Nagnaden, I'm gonna need you guys to shape up. You are top tier. You're not low tier. So stop giving all that crap out that, that you guys suck, and let's go. Let's invade NEC and give it a show." And seeing Fox putting on the performance that they've been able to do with Collector is a huge statement, just for the character alone and the community to say, "Hey, the tools are there." Yeah. Maybe you just got to switch up the variation style a little bit, but it is there. And here we go. El Kukoi going up against PL. Very it is nice time stuff. to see. And you know, one thing about uh, Sonic Fox is he wasn't really uh, teleporting too much. He was playing it so perfect and crystal clear. Let's see if your boy Perfect Legend is going to be able to do this with the Collector. Very nice. We're four, going to knock him out of the air. Oh, that was a really close. Almost was in range to get punished with. Ooh, the down one command grab. Tagging him. He should have committed. We're already seeing a completely different playstyle collector than what we saw out of Sonic. We're seeing a lot more defensive. Really, really kind of more interested in staying far away from him. But El Kukoi's just going in with these four two strings. Tried to fish for that flaw. Another flaw. command grab from your boy Perfect Legend. What is he going to do? Hitting his up three. Oh, no, that was the up two. Knocking his up two out of proportions. With the oh, shutting it down completely. Put the foot away. Just controlling that mid range. That's exactly what Collector has been in the conversation, at least, being known to do. Mm -hmm. Gase taking a step back right now. The Hell Sparks is going to launch him. PL in a really good position up around. He needs to ride the momentum. That's it. That's what it is. Beautiful punish there on the whiffed second Hell Spark there, forcing Okakori off of his meter. Plus frames. That was a beautiful sequence of strength right there. Honestly, El Kukoi's just getting caught by these four fours, and the damage is really starting to add up. Yeah, man. Another command grab. Walking him slowly to the corner right now. PL is on such a good game right here. God, and look at the damage. It's insane. 34%. Oh, my God. That could have been his chance. That, that could have been El Kukoi's chance right there. Even the spider, he's leaving the scene. He said, you didn't punish? I'm out. <laughs> That's a <laughs> <rough>. <laughs> <You can't. laughs> Did you see that? The spider left once he dropped the punish. All right, so no doubt they're just letting the players know to uh, 
lower the health bars. There was a little situation. Oh. I did see that earlier. I thought he went up there. He was like, hey, PL, uh, can you win next time? Wait, who won that? PL? Okay, you know, I'm obviously not watching the match. <laughs> Listen, that was a beautiful performance out of PL. Coming out of ECT where he went with pretty much all Kung Lao, uh, variation three, variation two, whatever it was, and had a solid showing. But he's been putting in the work with Collector ever since uh, ECT came to an end. And El we just saw before, El Kukui is not someone to be messed with after what he just showed us against Hayate. But now PL's up against the guy who put Hayate in losers. I already told you, man, the knock Nodins are here. Maybe they did have that Nod conversation. Nodin, Nodin had a try. talk with the elder knock Nodin. I'm talking, this dude came through, bald head, had a gray beard touching the ground, and he said, what brings you here, Sonic Fox? Sonic Fox Sonic said, yo, listen, my man, uh, you're top tier. And he said, Sonic okay, so Sonic leave. And leave. like that, and the, the word spread like wildfire. And we've seen more collector already than we've seen, I would even say, throughout more than half of the pro competition so far. Yes, yeah, literally, like, I think already half of it has been collector. Half of what we've how, seen how has been collector. How weird is that? You got collector main on commentary. You got collectors all over the place. I brought them in my backpack. I'll okay, so now El Kukoi going with I'll Take Johnny Cage. This was what we were talking about earlier. Has a bunch of characters at his disposal. Really didn't seem to like the, the matchup with Shang Tsung, so here we are. Oh, very nice. He's going to hit him with the standing four, launching him. El Kukoi immediately with the breaker, though. Down four. And you know that down four from Collector has so much hit advantage, dude. Once he tags you with the down four, you got to watch out for standing four or anything else. Oh, that is definitely the not a trade in your favor. No nice way. Bit of damage there by PL. I'm going to say, too, Collector on this stage specifically with those interactables is pretty OP. If he combos him to the corner and uses it, whoo, you're going to be looking at a lot of mix. Oh, it decides to finally let the rest of the string connect. Gonna keep it unbreakable. 27% fatal blow at the ready. Perfect legend. Oh! Okay. He saved the fatal blow too. That was genius stuff from El Kukui. He really needs to be careful in this mid range. He keeps getting caught by these straight uh, standing fours by PL's collector. Punishing the get up roll. And that's where a lot of the damage is coming from. Yup. Is he gonna use the interactable? He better use it! No, he should have went for the re Okay, I can understand. He probably wants the resources for a, a breaker or something, you know? I think it's a smart move, because Johnny does do a decent amount of damage. Oh, yeah. Plus frames across the board. Especially once he reaches that 30 life percent threshold, Johnny's another character. Nice up three wake up by PL. Keeping up the at bay. Oh. There we go. That's it, just teleport, I'm out of here. That was actually really risky there. He just threw it out. He could have punished the startup frames of it. But PL not caring. He's just throwing him out there right now. Look at him. El Kukui's just taking a step back. I think he's trying to bait out a close teleport. But PL has no resources to work with. So he's going to wait till he gets that resource and probably go for a far teleport. And one cool thing about Collector is because of his uh, weird hitbox when he crouches. That up two that went so far. That was crazy. His up two mace is, is pretty stupid, dude. That was Yo. such a far range. How did that connect? Fight. And then goes in with that grab, co closes out the second round. Now PL on set point. The Good luck. Going for the defensive play. Taking his time. He has a lot of time on the clock. He has no reason to go in. He knows he keeps getting caught by that standing four. For sure, he's teleporting. Double teleport. Yo, this guy's playing like MKX Lao PL right now with this collector. He's, he's uh, substituting the Kung Lao teleports with collector teleports. Look at this! What? It's it. Now he needs to force El Kukoi off the breaker. No, he's going to keep him standing. So good amount of damage, almost 30%. Oh, a down he, two. He's got corner position. He can make this work. He's jumping like a jumping bean right now. Trying to open up PL. Nice block on the 4-1 oh. by El Kukoi. It's just, it's just getting it's getting too close. It's getting way too close. And this is PL's game to take right now. If he wants to advance in this bracket, he needs to win this round. And that is definitely going to be a punish and absolutely closing out game number two. How many game threes are we going to be seeing here? This is crazy. This is insane. This is actually this is a really, insane. really awesome tournament right now. But this is pro competition, man. I'm lit. And this is the first block. <laughs> we have a second block after this.
I cannot wait to see what happens in the in the Johnny second block. Team. I can't wait to. Are we going up to top 16 here? Yeah, so how it's going to work today is that it's going to be two blocks of pools playing all the way through pools and playing all the way through the top 16 back to back to back, leading up to the top eight, which will then be played tomorrow evening. Yo, so this is it is going to be a long evening. For a lot of action. Every single person in this building. Now, El Kukoi had the right idea with Outtake. Now, he's just taking a second. Look he at has this guy. He's rushing him. He said, hurry up, PL. I don't got all day. He has, he has to stick with Outtake here. Now, PL is going to go with Kung Lao. He's been in this situation before. He has been able to make these situations work. Round but one. that Outtake Johnny on El Kukoi was looking really solid. It really was. And I, I was going to say previously, uh, Collector's Hitbox can actually duck under most of those projectiles at a, at a really close range. So Now, I'm not Let's sure if Kung Lao through. shares the same trait. So if PL's going for a comfort pick, he's really going to need to be tightening it up because that dive kick is certainly not the way to start no, it off. No, no, no. No YOLO dive kicks, no YOLO teleports. This is it. 1-1 one, one apiece. PL's going to have to play crispy, crispy. Cream up in here. But PL has had some solid defense up close. Far away, he just seems to be a little bit too antsy. Gets opened up by the back three. This will certainly be an easy, could have been a little bit more damage, but honestly, that was just all Kukoi. And this is start. This set is starting to slip away from PL. Yeah, he needs to make some adjustments right now. There's no time to think about it. Oh, good whip punish on the getup from Kukoi. PL's gonna take him for a ride to the corner. Going with a string that just, why? Back through two string, you really don't see that much of it. It's dangerous to throw out. because a lot of people just low profile and you're just there like, okay, GG's. You go down one into the grab. El Kukoi getting this pressure going. I like what I like how he's approaching this match. Oh. He stays defensive, mm -hmm. he goes in for a little bit of damage and then he backs up again. But now PL is all over him. Very good stuff. El Kukoi is like, Oh my God, Pio's playing so safe. This is so smart from him, and he's about to tie up one to one. Dude, everything is game three, last round, last everything in this tournament. Now, great, ah! PL was able to close out that second round. He has no resources to work with. It's going to come back over time, but El Kukoi might want to consider going in and getting at least one combo off before oh that God. breakaway comes in, but it looks like it is right back in there. Oh my god, he's gonna convert off of that. This is gonna be big damage. No, the drop, or maybe he went for a setup. I don't know. They go back grab, switching positions here is El Kukoi. Off in to go in, this is his time. Smelling blood, interrupting the orbital hat. Very good, jump kick, plus frames. Gonna hit him with the combo. Oh, the flawless block out of nowhere. That move is hella safe. Oh, beautiful punish there. This, this is what he needs. This is what El Kukui needs right now. This, this, is, oh! this is so close. You saw that roundhouse kick to get him out of the way? Staggers all over the place. No more resources to work with. PL has to be careful here. El Kukui doesn't quite have Fatal Blow! And that's that that. going to do it. Perfect legend staying alive, advancing in the winner's bracket. El Kukui must be devastated Listen, right man, now. my voice can't take it. I am, my voice is cracking left and right. I can't do this anymore. This is too much. This is too much. So what is, like, just think about the past 15 minutes of what's been going on. El Kukui pulls an upset against Hayate. PL pulls an upset against El Kukui. I don't understand what's happening right now. This I can't do wild. this, man. This is wild, bro. This is wild, wild, wild. I'm scared to see who we got up next because, like, all these matches have just been bangers, man. I'm telling you. Last hit, last round, everything type matches. This is what you like to see in a Mortal Kombat Pro competition setting. Is that not what you want? I don't think you could have asked for a better way to start off this tournament. No way. No way. Dude, this, this is hype. This is hype. And we just got a whole bunch more killers coming in. We haven't even gotten to Ninja Killer against Deadly Rebel, another collector. I don't know what's going on right now, they but like- I was gonna do commentary today, that's why. This was said, for you. This, yeah, they said, yo, we gotta really give a lot of collectors for this. This was player. your gift for being brought on yeah, board. There's a ton player. of collectors. Thank you, Netherrealm, thank you, okay? I wanna say thank you, and I'm honored. I'm gonna cosplay as collector one of these days. Shave my head, bald. I would pay to see that. <laughs> <laughs> I would pay to see that. Now, Ninja Killer, as we all know, uh, is known for his Liu Kang, but went to DreamHack Atlanta, and actually used Johnny Cage 
I'll take Johnny Cage. I'll take Johnny Cage is one of those characters that's been in the conversation of being one of the best in the game. When variation th through third variations rolled out amongst the entire cast, I'll take was one of the ones that just absolutely stood out, along with upgraded Instantly. Jackie, Arctic Anarchy, uh, Frost as well. It is a super strong character. Yeah, people don't realize it, um, but the projectiles he has, all the frame traps he has, just his buttons in general, I feel like that character's neutral really plays MK11. Exactly how you want to play it. You know, he can he can deal with the offense, he can deal with the zoning, but dude, this is about to get real. Ninja Killer. I'm pretty sure we're about to see uh, the Liu Kang legend be pulled out. And then Deadly Rebel, I would assume is going to stick with Spare Change. I, I think that's all we've really seen him play is that's, that variation. That's what he's been devoting his time into, you know, like... Collective. He should have, honestly, I feel he should have kept a really strong Liu Kang because why not? That character really covers all this, all the negative stuff of Collector. What? Wait. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So he is actually going to go with Liu Kang. Maybe he's not ready to bust out the Johnny Cage. Maybe he just prefers this matchup. Yeah. But we'll wait to see how oh, this is going to play out. This has to be a little bit farther in the pools at this point. Yes. Has to be. Bro, Ninja Killer wants to turn it up for everybody in the chat right now. Get hyped! We got Ninja Killer versus Deadly Rebel in a button check. This isn't the match, so I got hype for no reason. So everybody reduce the hype, and we'll, we'll relit it. Listen, it is, seeing these two players on the screen is yeah. enough hype for anybody. I got mad excited. Look at Ninja Killer right now. He really looks like he's into it. Looking like this is the grand finals. Now, real quick, going back to talking about, you know, final combat and the point system. Uh, Ninja Killer is sitting here at fifth place with 830 points. He's essentially guaranteed. Collective. Oh, so, so that puts him in fifth. That puts him in fifth, dude. He's he's really set. Yeah, he's pretty much good for the finals. So he has a little bit of wiggle room, and maybe if he wants to test out a different, you know, character or maybe a different variation, but he doesn't want to. He's been mm -hmm. consistent ever since he came into the offline scene, winning DreamHack Montreal yeah. and then winning DreamHack Atlanta as well. While that wasn't a pro composition event, still a really solid performance. Yeah. And here we are with Liu Kang. Oh, what a trade right away from your boy, Deadly Rebel. He's going to come in with the forward three shenanigans. And you're already seeing the respect of that mid-range. Goes with the 4-4. Four -four. Okay, the mace to keep it safe. And look, Deadly Rebel knows he's going up against the best of the best. Escape failed. He's in trouble. This is a really good start for Deadly Rebel. Yeah, he has the chips loaded. Oh, One yeah. cool thing about Collector, too, if he wants to let it rip, he can let the uh, Crushing Blow rip off Bola, off a captured Bola. Oh, that is a lot of really good take. And you know what? That might be something he ends up doing just to yeah. break out the round. Because this is certainly not where he wants to be. Staggers across the board. Ninja Killer. Plus frames. Yo, he clipped him right out of the interactable. Unbelievable. And this is going to kill. It is Massive damage crushing blow. From your boy, Deadly Rebel, let's go. That was perfect. Went with the four grab, which wasn't really the more obvious option. Beautiful play by Deadly Rebel, and a brilliant start to what I believe is going to be an amazing set. Oh my god, the stance cancel into the low. Just like that, May straight to his face. Wow, the whiffs. He's got to put a forward one. This guy, Deadly Rebel, he's putting him straight to the corner right now. And then Yo. another punish. Deadly Rebel is playing so solid right now. Look at all the damage. Look at how much damage he, he's taking. He's melting in the corner. Somebody help him. Okay, this is Ninja Killer. This is what he does when he wants to make the comeback. He's slowly going to load up the KBs. The anti-air. Deadly dead. Rebel taking the first game. Wait a minute. What's going on here? Oh, oh and a brutality. Okay. Bro. Okay. And Ninja Killer is slouch forward. He is slouch forward. This is predator mode right here. Wow. And back to character select screen. Deadly we Rebel. Go. Deadly Rebel right now, people. He is about to do something that nobody was Johnny waiting Cage. for. I told Collect you, bro, the collector outbreak is the here. Hourglass. This is it. They better turn this tournament into NEC collectors. Now, we all we've seen Ninja Killer on the stage plenty of times before. He always has the same expression, but at the end of the day, he is not in a good position right now. Granted, he has now made the switch to Johnny Cage. Not Altic. I think I saw him go with Showstopper. Yes, he did. What? He just threw a vial right in front of his face for the start of the match? This man is disrespectful. 
Oh, what a whiff punish. But he could have got a little bit more damage, I think, even if he just went for the shadow kick since he didn't have the offensive bar. It don't make sense now, too. I think he went out take Johnny. I mean, he went Luke Kane because he doesn't like the matchup. There's too many whiffing issues with Johnny Cage against Collector. Well, he said, let me just eliminate that. But look, go into it anyways. Beautiful with the whiff challenge. punish. Launching him, very good stuff. Gonna shadow kick him to the corner. Ninja Killa. Ooh, he said, put the vial back in your bag, please. Oh, and just so much damage off of basically like every single touch. Nice challenge on the bullet cancel. And that is the Ninja Killa that we expect. Yes. Round two, fight. We're gonna have to wait to see if Deli Rebel can make any adjustments here. Seems to be a little bit lost up close, and just this pressure is too much to deal with. The one-two auto shimmy. Very good stuff, poking like a maniac right now. Ninja Killer looking for the opportunity. And just like that, Deadly Rebel's gonna catch him with a grab. Forward three, keeping the distance close. Yo! That whip on is from Ninja Killer! The reactions from him right now! The fundamentals are just too on point right now. This is all Ninja Killer right now. Honestly, has no reason to even go in. He'll take the time. He's got 54 beautiful seconds on the clock. And Killer gonna hit him. Very good stuff. That was a lot better for him. He's gonna take that really easy and clean. Deadly Rebel's thinking about it. He said, oh man, go back to Liu Kang. And bro. That's gonna be, if you're Deadly Rebel, what are you thinking right now about how one-sided the matches were and they just kind of like switched spots? First Deadly Rebel took in the entire match and now Ninja Kill has returned the favor. But he's sticking with Collector and Spare Change at that. Again, another game third. Escape failed right off the start. Deadly Rebel is gonna, this is exactly how it went well for him last time. He had the escape field ready. All the chips were in his favor. No, it loses it! That was he should a have played it smart! That was, that was a beautiful grab. Take another, another grab. one! Oh, anti! That could have crushing blow, but he didn't commit to the string. Why? It's opened up by the 2-4. You know what it is? Sometimes when you try to throw down two too fast, you'll get a standing two accidentally. And then you don't get the conversion. Very good, going with the one, two, three. I don't even know what's the string, but he's coming in. There you go, another escape fail. He's got it again. That's gonna help him because the life lead is not really too much in his favor. Regardless of the little bit of burn damage. Oh my God, do not whip while somebody's on knockdown with the collector. You will pay the price. Yo! Beautiful defense, this that's gonna, gonna kill! kill! Wait a minute, Deadly Rebel. Point. Right back to what we saw from the first game, sitting on that point. point. Round two. This is too much, Fight. man. This is too much. The projectiles. Ninja Killer still staying poised. No, no. Deadly Rebel needs to calm down. He's jumping back. He's freaking out a bit. Another escape fail. He gets two directions. Remember, people, he gets two directions. Crushing blow. But now, Ninja Killer knowing that, he might check that direction every single time. Down one, Showtel Fury amplifying it to switch aside. And he's just going to back up here. He okay, doesn't want to be anywhere near. Fire. Beautiful 4-3. Oh, Ninja Killer's gonna make this count right now. Do the side switch. He wants the corner position. He wants to put everything in his favor. That could have done some crushing blow and it could have been over. Nice jump kick air there and a little shadow kick to follow. That is definitely Dude, going to be death, but doesn't get the amplify in one, time. One touch is the fatal blow. It's gonna do it right here, Big D. No! He should have held it! He had the right read, but Ninja Killer waiting for the perfect moment to toss him! In round, round three of game fight. number three, Deadly Rebel on the verge of possibly pulling an upset. But Ninja Killer is not ready to give up. Deadly Rebel opening over with the 4-1. A lot of damage being dished out. Goes for the setup. Oh! Catching the row! Deadly Rebel! Oh, and the grab tech, so the, the crushing blow grab is gone. A down two! No! This is too much. Ninja Killer, 35%. Another, no, the, oh my god! He has him in the corner. Deadly Rebel's gonna tell four out of there. Another escape field. One more could do it for him. It is getting so close. Gets opened up by 244 again. Is he going to get opened up? The shimmy, oh. the pokes. It's no! He doesn't confirm. He's dead. It is over. The miss hit confirmed by Deadly Rebel will cost him that set. And even Ninja Killer is smiling. The dream is dead. For Deadly Rebel, beautifully played by Ninja Killer. Even he's smiling at that. He knew that was not his setup. 
Yo, my heart, my chest hurts. That, bro. Yo, I thought, wait, wait, wait. when he caught him with the one three, I thought he was gonna fatal blow and finish it. That it what? was it. That was it. It was. Why? GG's, shake my hand, fatal blow. It is done. Why? But he didn't go for the hit confirm for whatever reason. Maybe just the nerves were too there. My head is spinning because of that. I'm okay. like confused now. Dude. That is the worst. You hate to see that sort of thing happen, but at the no, end no, of the no. day, it is what it is. Ninja Killer. That, that was a choke. That was the. I think that was the biggest choke in the pro. Actually, you know what? I think I had the biggest choke against Cusco at Combo Breaker. Never mind. <laughs> I take the award. <laughs> we don't want to see the replay of that. <laughs> I remember that. Dude. But that was. <laughs> that was his life. It was like that. And I didn't. Back in the one. golden days, huh? But beautifully played by Ninja Killer and Delhi Rebel. It is unfortunate to see Delhi Rebel sent to losers like that. But that's no, Ninja Killer, man. He, he is so poised when it comes to gameplay that honestly, I wouldn't expect that. I wouldn't expect anything else otherwise out of him. So Ninja Killer will be advancing on in the winners. Delhi Rebel, not out of it yet. We've seen beautiful play out of him thus far. I was going to ask, do you know if Daddy came through? I'm not entirely sure, actually. Hopefully, we could get a little bit of an update because he is in this block yeah. as well. Daddy is in Ninja Killer's block. Big Daddy, Buffalo. And now we have Zork going up against Combat. Now, Combat, uh, Eternal Garrus, actually. Another Eternal Garrus, but we still don't really see that variation that much. Mm -mm. If it's not out of Gur, it's out of Combat, and that's really pretty much it. You know, Burrito Voorhees was mentioning he was going to play Eternal, yeah. as we mentioned before. He's not here this weekend due to a hand injury. Hopefully he heals up man. soon. You know, and Burrito being in, in the pool C2 with Ninja Killer, Deadly Rebel, all of them, yeah, he would have shaked it up so bad. like More than it wow. already is. I mean, Deadly Rebel <laughs> is already a dark horse, you know? But so now... Killers out here. Oh, wow. We're actually... Are we going to see Baraka out of combat? We might. We haven't seen... Bar Combat played Baraka in a long time. We haven't seen Baraka in general, really, he might in a while. Baraka here. I always wonder why Baraka is a really strong character. Dishes out tons of damage, great pokes. Bro, Baraka touches you, you lose half your life. He gets right back on top of you. He touches you again, and that's it. Eliminated from the tournament. GG's. Baraka's having a feast in the Tarkatsu camp. And not to mention gra uh, crushing blows on both grabs. We're starting to see that yeah. more as this meta is evolving, that crushing blows on both grabs is automatically moving characters up in the tier list. We're seeing it with Collector. We, are, we should be seeing it with Baraka. Even Scarlet has it as well. Scarlet a little bit more, um, I would consider underrated, not really talked about that much. Jackie but now Briggs. Zork is gonna be going Gears. with Jackie Briggs. Oh, no Baraka. I was ready to talk like Baraka. I'm pretty sure I just saw next gen out of, out of Zork. Not first, knock, not first round knockout, not upgraded. I'm pretty sure I just saw Next Gen. Yeah, but we both know Next Gen is a problem. Oh, you know, yeah. Sunio, he's been putting in work. Shout out with to the Next Gen. Oh, it is upgraded. Perfect. So this is where this was one of the variations that we expected to see a lot this weekend. Not Collector, but upgraded Jack. Collector took over instead, man. Okay, very good. Noble Combat's gonna have access. To, oh no, he's playing Infinite War now. So he went for the third variation. Never mind. Maybe he just likes his variation a little bit more, especially with Upgraded. You know, Eternal kind of relies more on ground game. If Upgrade is in the air all the time, that's a variation to pick. And now, look at all the damage. Yeah, Almost 30%. Right Very good jump in. Going for the staggers right now. Combat not knowing when to push a button. Oh, knock him out of the air. No conversion from your boy Zork. But it's okay. Very good stuff. Continue the pressure. He's going to jump right out of there. Oh. Oh! Wait a minute. Oh no, misses the down one. He and that will certainly kill. Oh. You know, if he would have went for the uh, choke slam, the choke, he could have just down to him and killed him. He could have saved that, but he didn't want to risk it. Respectable. I think he was afraid of maybe the, the of, uh, sword going for a breakaway. He just wanted to spend the spend the fatal blow, round close out that round. Because especially, especially at this stage of the tournament, you know, we talked about how combat needs a top performance to do whatever it takes. Yeah, he's right on 13th place for points. And only top 12 gets it from the pro competition. So combat is fighting very hard for his points. Very good now. He's gonna get the grab. We're gonna take him all the way to the sky. Bomb! Body slam, boys. Oh, got him in the corner right now. Zork unleashing hell out of nowhere. 
And I like what he's doing. He's keeping combat standing up and just going yeah. for guaranteed pressure. That's the best kind of characters in this game. The ones that don't allow you to break out, you just don't brutalize people. Wait a minute. Wake up buttons, forcing combat off of his defensive meter. Nice little grab tech there. And the forward grab. And this is where it starts to get scary. This is this is the hometown advantage. These grab loops is what Garrus players like to have. The forward three, the trade on the poke. Both of them getting a counter hit. He pushed the button. Listen, it will work 90% of the time. <laughs> Just let it happen. Believe in your gut feeling. And yeah. now Zork. If you guys saw the face of Big D when I said he pushed the button, he looked at me like he already knew. I looked at it like I got hit by it. <laughs> now, nice Yo. little air to air. Knock him out of the air. What are we going to see? Big damage always from Gearus. 32%. Go for grabs again. The grab loose is really what's giving combat some mileage here. Letting him run away with a health lead. Well, no punish there on the low sand trap. No whiff! This is Zork's chance to turn this around. He's gonna no scope 360, snipe him with a jump three in the corner. Oh! Okay! Zork! Wow, goes for the grab. Okay. Starna. Kind of trying to even things out here. I love what he just did there. Short hopping, not too far, just to throw his uh, his timing off. Wait a minute. Oh, so we're trying to bait out an anti -air. Very smart. Combat not biting. And here we go, back in the grab loop city. Slamming him onto the ground. Oh, oh no! It. Zork eating a down two. This is not going to kill. He had to oh. break away there. What's it going to be? And the down. Two, scouting the ground. Close him down two from your boy. Noble combat. Yo! Okay. Punching the chest. On the first Not game. The other side, bro. This is one hell of a fatality. He said, you stupid. Smack the brain right out of the head. He said, think about this. But how is she going to think about it when she has no brain? You ain't thinking about anything. You ain't thinking about anything, but combat is the one taking the step back to think. I think he did that fatal that fatality in the first game to give himself some time to relax. Because that was way too close for comfort. <laughs> and the movements I've seen from combat, he's really feeling himself right now. This dude is in the weakened album, going ham. Wait a second. Zork is going to open him up. Good poke, knocking him out of the way. It's just crazy to me. Like, I'm watching all these matches. See what it says in between the two players' names? That says pools. It says pools. <laughs> I, thought, I thought this was top eight. Here you go. A couple down twos. Look at the damage. Keep in the corner position. God, that hurts. That was too much there. 44% is all it took. Oh, the down four gimmicks. I'm telling you, dude. That catches everyone slipping, especially pro competition. You're never going to expect it. Wow, nice down two there by Combat. Knew he had just enough time to interrupt those, uh, I'm going to say those down air blasts. And there's a lot of mind games that go in with those, but Combat really hasn't been getting opened up. The down one or the one where she hops over? The one where she's in the air, the, the one that goes all the way down. Yeah, she gets a, a lot of mileage off of that move, dude, because it, it's safe. It's safe. You can amplify it twice. You can do up to three. Air shots in a row. Or you could just let it rip and just do one. There's a lot of mind games to it. Kind of reminiscent of what Hellboy was capable of in Injustice 2. But now, Combat starting to run away with this second round. Oh, that's so smart. He's doing down four low stand, down four mid stand. He's kind of entering that second layer of mind games. But yeah. now, Zork keeping him standing. A lot of damage in here. Okay, the grab. Noble Combat's going to need one more combo to close it out here. Yo! Zork is wild! Wake up buttons again. I don't know. This should be able to kill. Jackie, one of the more weaker fit of. Oh, yeah, definitely gonna kill. Bro, it, it literally looked like something, like it was a cat and you just pulled on its tail and it woke up. The, the wake up 1 1 just caught the edge of the hitbox of the grab and then com confirming into the fatal blow. So smart by Zork, but now again the low sand trap. Combat going in with this offense. What is that though? Patience. He neutral ducks for 50 seconds straight and down ones. He said, let me get a nice, precise hit right to the kneecap. Okay, very good stuff. What is going on here? Another down four into the big fist. He's using the down four as, like, a better tool for his normals, you know? Has so much good range. Like, why not? Go, and anti-airing with the 4-3 takes a step back. 
Alright, Zork getting a little bit more damage, trying to get aggressive now. Okay. This could be the start of something for Zork. Puts combat back into the corner. Combat, no defensive meter to work with. Next touch can do a lot of damage. Pokes right into the grab. The shimmy. He's dead. Is this going to kill? No way. Yeah. Look at the damage. Okay, Wait, not just yet. Not just yet. He messes the combo. Okay, but combat does that fatal blow. Oh, and with punish it. So smart. And there you go. I, that that did, is quick. He got an input error. He tried to do low sand, and instead he got the uh, the that, time freezer, the Thanos. That was quick. That was wake up roll. Fatal blow, and I'm out. It's moving on to the next one. But you know what? Zork was really close. He was playing super well. A few you know, key mistakes in there, a few couple drops in there. Other than that, it was just hard reads on combat's part. Down twoing in between the mind games when she's in the yeah, air. Yeah, huge shout out to Zork coming out here to play with the uh, upgraded Jackie Briggs variation. Like, I think personally that character is not easy to use. Like, you, you no, look definitely at it, not. You see her hopping all over the screen. You're like, man, this looks tough, but... I, I think I think it's like it's a really big layer of mind games when it comes to uh, upgraded Jackie Briggs. It takes it takes a lot of work to be really good with a character like that. Granted, yeah. the payoff is huge. We all know that upgraded is one of the best variations mm -hmm. in the game, but it takes a lot of work to be able to utilize each tool 100%. and knowing and when mix to use everything them. Up. Exactly. So you have to give hats off to Zork for honestly putting on a really good showing against a player like Combat, who, like we said. That's a breath of fresh air for him because he needs to be placing this weekend. Okay. Oh, my okay. God. Dude, back to back to back to back. Okay. Animal matches. Biohazard going up against Fox. Now, I wonder if Fox is going to stick with Collector. Another talking point that they've made on Twitter is how Raiden could potentially be top five as mm -hmm. well. We haven't, seen, we haven't seen Fox really use Raiden yet. But there's potential there. And now, obviously, Biohazard is going to be sticking with Ripper Kano. Remember, he or did Arnie. make that comeback that comeback game with the, the Terminator, the governor. I wonder who he's going to go because I will admit, I was a little skeptical of the Terminator pick, but, man, that paid off. Big time. That I Every don't think he it, got was massive damage. Like I think that's really the, making that decision to switch the Terminator is what helped him really it, pull the W. thinking about it, I think. He's really taking his options right now for Sonic Foxes. What we think is he gonna, he's going to go with the Collector most likely. That has been his character pick lately, you know. He's been on a tear with the character as well. So I think he's going to go with the Collector. I don't even... You know what? Maybe he won't go Collector. I mean, uh, maybe Bio won't go Arnold because Collector versus Arnold is pretty hard for Arnold. Is it? Yeah. I can see that being a thing, you know. He has no normals. Arnold has no normals. Now imagine dealing with a character with a half-screen high that's just coming out in 10 frames. That you is really I'm true, actually. Uh, Terminator's best neutral tool, in my opinion, is the down four. That, he has a great down four, but other than that, he really does kind of lack in that mid range. And then going up against a character like Collector that excels in the mid range with huh. that standing four string, maybe you're right. I don't think I don't think we're going to be seeing Terminator out of bio. No, I think his best pick will be to go Kano. That way, if Sonic Fox whiffs any like maces, standing four maces, or or probably whiffs anything, he just jump back and get a nice clean uh, ball roll punish. And at the end of the day, Ripper Kano is a mixed machine. It really is. High high risk, but you do get a lot of reward out of oh. it. So The way Bio it, plays, it looks like there's no risk at yeah. all. It, he just kind of lets it out. Down one in the Kano ball seems to work every time. Exactly. If I ever did it, it would never work. But no. for some reason, Bio has, a, has like a, at least an 80% success rate like with it. Like what we were talking about last time, man, the way you just mix all the tools with the character, that is what really makes them dangerous. You know, somebody can say, oh, this character's low tier. This character's low tier. But if you really piece the tool set together and start playing those mind games the way you're supposed to, get out of here. The character is not low tier. But even at the same time, too. Did somebody just throw a water bottle at these guys? I think I did see that. I don't what know who that was. What is going on here? He said, what is going on? <laughs> Bio said, are you serious? But even then, you take a look at, you know, what we talk about tiers and different characters, and we don't know which characters in which tier. That shows that there, is, there really is true balance in this game because you don't know. There are so many characters in one tier, it's hard to figure out who's top five, who's top ten. That's a beautiful subject you just put. Have you been seeing all the, all the uh, character tier lists people are making up? Everyone is literally different, like drastically different. You got Baraka, A+, plus, then another one's tier list, Baraka, S. And somebody else, you got Aaron Black, D. I'm like, bro, really? 
But even then, you look at the characters that we've been seeing lately, like Collector, who has been, you know, weeks ago really just more in the bottom end of people's tier list. But now, all of a sudden, there's been a lot more talk about Collector, mainly out of Fox. And people are like, wait, you know, maybe, maybe there's something going on here. <laughs> and as we're seeing, Deadly Rebel almost pulled an upset against Ninja Killer. In my opinion, he had it in the bag, played super well, but just that missed hit confirm into the fatal blow is really what cost him. But we're seeing a bunch of different collectors playing really well. Another one who's a little bit more relatively unknown. Um, I'm not entirely sure if he's in this pool bracket specifically, but uh, Barry Slushy. Yes, you were a talking bit, about Barry Slushy. A we little bit more of a stream him. monster. You know, he's in a lot of different streams. He's playing a lot of people. He has a very Collector. underrated collector. He's been playing him since day one. He's like, listen, guys, I think this character's really good. Yeah, he had a tough pool. Barry Slushy was actually thrown into pool C3 with Hayate, Kukui, Perfect Legend, Kerr. Yeah. So I think he might have gotten eaten alive, maybe. That's how it <laughs> I mean, listen. I think they you might have drank the berry slushy. Listen, you look at all the names in that pool, only two Round make it out, I'm pretty sure. I think they're getting right into it. Yes, sir. Right off the start, standing four. Sonic Fox trying to show Biohazard. He's not afraid to let these make these yo-yos rip. Yo, and Bio is going Ripper. We're see we're gonna see a ton of rips. Mm -hmm. This is what Bio likes to do. That was one of them. He, he did the most delayed air Kano ball that actually hit Sonic. Very good. Flawless block on the ball that was not necessary, but <laughs> there you go. Going with that overhead roll. That is virtually safe as well. How did that not trip guard? If Bio hit a button in the air, 100% would have yeah. been a part of beautiful reversal there. Oh my god, the way he's utilizing the back to left from Collector right now with the corner switch. What? The down one and then the standing two work? Okay, wait a minute. Not out of it just yet. And the up three. That's dead. dead! Beautiful. Expensive but necessary. Biohazard had to spend that. Against the Sonic Fox, yes. Shake him up. Kick him in the side. Stick the blade deeper into the neck. Kano, boys. And where he found that lizard? Where did he find that lizard? Takes a quick bite. Round and now, two. you know what? Biohazard's in a really good position right now. Granite Collector does have a teleport. This is where the corner pressure is going to come into play. Beautiful grab escape by Fox. And if there's one character you do not want to jump in at, is Collector. His down two hitbox transforms him into a cockroach. That was sick. One of the he things did. that Bio's done so well as I've watched him, you know, just evolve as a player are these flawless block reversals. And it has gotten to the point where you get afraid to press a button up close. 100%, dude. I'm scared to jump in on people nowadays. They'll fall this block up to you. Oh my god, reversal back to point. Gonna get a stabby, stabby combo conversion. Down three. What is going on right now? These guys are having a straight slugfest. Oh my god, the trade from the ball rope. Oh, that is definitely, but oh, only goes for the up three. Grab, whiffing entirely, but no punish. A back grab. Kano, another character with two grab crushing. No! Wait a minute. Goes for the grab. Nice Rabbit escape by Fox. That should be death. He's dead. Wait a minute, Bio. Bio hazard. And, and the fatality showing we mean business. Taking him to the floor. Headbutt. Another one. Need it. All right, Over. Go, man. This, this is my baby right here. Yo, yo, yo. Somebody stop. Collector's getting brutalized. Stop the match. This is my baby boy. Up 1 0. <laughs> I'm still trying to process this, man. And like I just mentioned before, Biohazard has been practicing relentlessly on the flawless box. Right. And arguably, that is what won him that first. Sonic went right back into this. No character switch, nothing. He has all the faith in Collector right now, dude. Oh my god, not pushing a button in the air. He had enough time to react, but he didn't do it. Biohazard is playing super well right now. Fox going for a little bit of damage, amplifying it to switch positions. Very good ball roll straight to the face. And this is Baldy versus Baldy right now. And now that normal, that I believe it's 4 1 or 4 or 2, is plus one on walk, so you have to take it down one after that. God, slam Look at him. the damage, almost 34%. Good grab. Sonic Fox, is he going to be able to make a comeback in this situation right now? He's down. Oh my god, the whip punish. Bio has to break it away. He believes he can make it out and close out this round with the air to air. This is it! Sonic Fox taking it with a fatal blow finish! Undoubtedly gonna kill. 100%! Giving Sonic some breathing room because if, if Bio would have took that round, yo! 
I would have been sweating Round bullets. Two, no, he definitely had to spend the fatal blow there. Nice little whip punish there. Grabbing Grab him into the, into the corner. Biohazard is playing really well, mixing up the striker grab game. Get off of me. Another false lock attempt, unfortunately, not paying off of this. Don't punish on the wake up of three Sonic Fox right now, people. He's showing us why the collector is such a deadly pick. He puts himself as a position that can punish you every time. Three. No, he went through the last hit. I'm surprised he didn't use the crushing blow there. I'm surprised the last string of 443 didn't connect. Oh, he hopped right over it. Forcing Bio off of the breakaway again. No, he's gonna hold on to it. Now, granted, this is Ripper Kano. Two touches and he can make a comeback. But like the no-no, like don't you jump. said. Don't jump on the character. Now, is, are we gonna see if, oh, okay, we're not gonna see a fatality on return. Look, Collector goes from biggest hitbox, then he goes down two, he turns into uh, a little roach. Easily one of the best Round down two anti-airs in the game. Fight. Easily, but now, just like what Fox did, Bio's gonna go ahead and just go straight back into it. He knows, it's just, he needs to get more aggressive. Oh no, why did he let go of block? That would have been a punish if he blocked it. That's the thing, Bio hasn't even knew it would have been a punish. Look Again. at these flawless blocks. These are some of the best I've ever seen out of uh, out of Biohazard. He knows this is it. This counts right here. And Biohazard, man, when, when you talk about points, he needs he needs to really make some noise right now if he's gonna want to pop up. He's definitely way farther down on the leaderboard. I don't even think winning would even really help him at this point. Seriously? But this could go. This could be good confidence going into LCQ. If You're he right about the that. Game. This is a practice for him. But look at what's going on. He has the life lead. So gets clipped by that standing four. Yeah, breaker immediately, please. One more touch is gonna be fatal blow. Sonic Fox is round. Is it gonna happen? He's taking a step back. He knows he has a life lead. He doesn't want it to happen. One touch and the fatal blow is gonna do it. The jump kick connects. Up three connects as well. Oh, blocking it! Bio has it opting to take a step back. He's spinning his face for the trade! No, the mistaker from my fox! Overhead? Open. Just Yo, gets opened up. Sonic Fox is a genius. He is a future, a future teller. How did he go for that overhead? And just knew it was gonna hit. At that point, you just gotta go for the miss. If it was blocked, it was over. Now, it worked out for him. He's just got to move on. Biohazard have to move on as well into this second round. Another miss taken from by Fox. Down, down to it. Do not jump. Bio, if you hear me from behind the screen, don't jump! Almost gets clipped by that 4-4 again. There you go. That's to the blood. Break. Very blood. Biohazard <laughs> top pressing buttons after a block down one. And this set is slowly but surely starting to slip away. Wake up. Oh my god, Moro, he has him in the corner, and that's a that done gonna, deal. Definitely gonna oh, do it. Over four into the down back three. GG's. Very good try from Biohazard, I gotta say. Uh, he, like, he didn't wanna go Arnold. Arnold, just know, I, I feel he already knows, hands down. The neutral with that matchup is a problem for your boy Arnold. It's a big problem, and... But, you know, sometimes when a matchup is really bad, you, you just gotta, like, set your fears aside and just go for the try anyways, you know? You never know. You never know. I mean, it's very true, but at the same time, you know, Biohazard wanted to stick with Kano. I think it was the right choice, especially going up against a player like Fox. You know, you're probably right. Terminator might not have been the best pick just because of the neutral game going up against Collector. But Bio played super well with Kano. I just think he played a little bit too passive going into game number two uh, yeah. and three, honestly. Because when he started letting up a little bit, you know, we know him to be super aggressive. Just going in, risk or reward, something is about to happen. I think playing a little bit too passive is really what cost him there. I just think Arnold, like, Aside from that being a bad match matchup, the character is like literally designed off of 50-50. You need to guess. You need to guess. Oh, 100%. And uh, he plays running man, so I feel that would have been a big play, you know. If he does a, a forward four on the stagger, immediately go re reverse the running man. I mean, there's what, like four different mind games off of the running man stance? A little yeah. between the mid, the mid kick, the high pop up that's safe, the tackle, which is... While on safe has a crushing blow, I mean, there's so many different tools at his disposal that it's still a solid character regardless of what, you know, issues the character might have. 100%, man.
And I'm really curious to see what's going on in the uh, bracket side of things. I, I wonder how, how intense, how deep we're getting into this, you know? I mean, oh. we have to be coming up probably towards the end of the bracket. Okay, so we did just get word that that was the first block of pools. We are done with block C. Wow. So Sonic Fox is going to be advancing winner's side with the collector. The character he tweeted out was going to put the beats on everybody. And he has been. He is now on the really winner's side of top 16. Everyone who makes that other pool, winners or losers, will advance to the top 16. That will be playing later tonight. But for now, that is going to do us with Pool C. We're going to be taking a quick break. We will be back with more pools, more Mortal Kombat action. Destroyer, it's been a pleasure. Dude. And that is going to do it for us. Everybody, don't go anywhere. We'll be right Welcome to the last pro stop here. The last pro competition stop at NEC. My name is Darth Arma, and I have the pleasure of being joined here at this desk by the original Nightwolf main back in the MK9 days, two-time Evo medalist, wow. Evo finalist in both MKX and Injustice 2, and of course, our scene's best down player, Big D. Thank you so much for being here, man. I, I am so happy you threw in that last little <laughs> comment. Just, it's like, like the cherry on top of what it was. Hey, I thought was a nice little bit of touch. <laughs> I do pride myself on downplaying, just You're for the, the record. Especially now that I'm retired, I feel like I'm a lot more safe to do that. But thank you. We are back with Mortal Kombat action. Now, we are going to start off with a couple last matches of pools, the Block C to see who makes it into the top 16 that will be playing on later this evening. So we'll be going with a couple overdraft matches and then we'll be leading into Pool D. Yeah, and so just to sum up pools, uh, as they've already been uh, updated on Smash.gg, you guys can follow along on Smash.gg. Sonic Fox has made it out of uh, their pool in winners, and Combat has also made it out of their pool in winners. So we're just trying to solidify the finals here. And with this match coming up, we have Ninja Killa versus Vernon Oni in winner's finals of C2. Again, you guys can follow along at smash.gg, but it looks like buttons are checked. These guys are ready to go. And now we're finally seeing a little bit of Jade and variation to Jade at that. I'm very curious to see how much match models Ninja Killer has. I would grant that you would have them a lot. Okay. Down two, Punisher start us off. And you know, it's a really, really good start. And I think the you know, Ninja Killer is assessing the situation. You know, great reactions there of Jade turning on the purple, going right through with that flying kick. And then right there with the corner pressure, this is where we know Liu Kang thrives at. Right up close, right in your face, and now even going for the crab moves. Didn't commit to the whole thing, possibly could have got a crushing blow, but maybe holding on to it. At this point, I think it's smart just to hold on to it. Yeah. You have such a huge life lead, and even then, just a 1, 2, 3, just to close it out. You like to hold on to your resources for as long as possible. Use them when you really need to use them. Yeah, absolutely, especially considering that life lead, huge, huge, but hold on. Counter hit in the corner, we all know how much this hurts. No, he dropped it. Really uncharacteristic of this killer, but regardless, still has the corner pressure, still making it work. A flawless block on the wake up, and this is just, the life bar is just melting away. It is, it is, Big D, indeed, here just melting away before his eyes. Great punish of that roll out, and Ninja Killa off to a great start, getting that game number one here. And that was just absolutely quick work. We're going straight back to the character select screen. Maybe Jaded Jade wasn't really the right pick to make here. Jade. Yeah, possibly not. Maybe go back to Jade. Possibly. I didn't see what variation uh, Vernononi did select. He but went to go ahead the switch. He's going with variation one. Maybe the air glaives are going to help him out a little bit more. We'll have to wait and see. But just the pressure by Ninja Killer's Liu Kang is so suffocating that I don't know if air glaives is really going to be able to help that much more. Yeah, Ninja Killer is definitely a patient player. So he's going to, you know, take his time, hunt out those glaives, and take back the real estate any way he can. Great start here, going right into the air glaze. Variation specific to this uh, Emerald Defender that he just switched to. A couple plus friends here, and then right there, he's almost blocking a lot of these down fours. I don't know if that's intentional or not, but that's really impressive. Uh, Ninja Killer is one of the best at flawless blocking, not even just in you know an offensive way, but almost in any way possible. Great forward dash, possibly trying to get him to bite. Uh, no, nothing. I don't think that that uh, breakaway was intentional at all. That definitely seemed to be a little bit of a mistake. That could cost him a little bit here. Burning Oni does have the life lead right now. Goes for the counter. And again, this is what we know Jade to do. It's little bits of damage. Nothing super impressive, but it all adds up. 
Oh, it definitely does. It definitely does. Jumping over and rolling away again. Jade wants to stay as far away from Liu Kang as possible. Throws on the purple. Now when she is glowing purple like that, that means Liu Kang's fireballs will not connect, but that flying kick always will. Oh, and there you go. There's a the little punish there. Going to spend the bar closing out the first yeah, round. Now Ninja yeah. Killer on set point to advance into top 16. Round two. Fight. So it goes with the low fireball to start us off, trying to control that mid range there. Beautiful standing one anti air as well. Yeah, absolutely. Textbook has him in the corner. Get a little stagger and hold on. We okay. got a fairy. So it goes with the 4 3 stagger. Okay, now you're getting a little bit too cute with it. <laughs> a little too cocky there. I don't think Ninja Killer liked that at all. A reversal punish there. The matchup knowledge. He just did it! He just did down two into the crushing blow, forcing Ninja Killer to come off two bars, break away because he doesn't want to take the damage. Absolutely the Jade Special. When in doubt, down two <laughs> in the background to follow up. All of this real estate to work with if he chooses to back up with Ninja Killer throwing out fireballs, contesting that space. And again, throwing on the purple stuff, dousing yourself in there, but still susceptible to the flying kick. And the follow-up fireball, Ninja Killer taking it in convincing fashion. 2-0. Unfortunately, he did not start with that variation and started with the Jaded variation, which, you know, really got crushed there by Ninja Killer. Definitely. And also, Jaded, from what we're starting to see out of that variation, is definitely more interested in being up close and personal with the plus frames that comes to offer with the pole vault cancel into the shadow kick. But you don't want to be up close against Liu Kang. You want to stay far away. <laughs> so I think the switch was the right call. Unfortunately, just a little bit too late. And that really is, that's all there was. Ninja Killer just really ran through him. Yeah, 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 he did. And, and you know, like you said, you, you don't want to be up close to Liu Kang, especially when he's got one of the best mids in the business. Best mids in the business. Some of the best crushing blows you could ask for in a character. Great normals. Absurd damage, in my opinion. And good, you know, fireballs to really contest the space with it. Just an all-around solid character, but Burning Odie's not out of it. That was the winner's side, so he's not out of it just yet. He's going to have to work his way through losers if he wants to make it into the top 16. That will be playing later on this evening. But now, PL going against Arm Kratos. Perfect legend taking on Arm Kratos, who made it here uh, all the way from his homeland, his home country of Russia, if I remember correctly. Uh, and a little side note from the last match, Bernadoni is going to go down to the lower bracket to face uh, Deadly Rebel. Oof. I, I don't know if we're going to get that one on stream. Hopefully someone's going to record it. So be on the lookout for that intense match. Hopefully we'll be able to give an update on that because that is going to be insane. I mean, we all saw what happened between Deadly Rebel and Ninja Killer earlier. Oh, so that cool. was an insane set. But now we have PL going up against Arm Kratos. Arm Kratos did pull an upset earlier using Shang which I was really happy to see. We haven't seen a lot of Shang lately, especially, you know, with the likes of Fox and Grandpa mm -hmm. and uh, maybe a couple other players as well. PL, a couple characters at his disposal. We've been seeing a lot of Collector out of him, uh, but has been Collector. in talks of using Raiden, and Shang even Sings he went back to Kung Lao for one set. Yeah, yeah, he did. He did when he felt like he needed to. Um, again, when you play all these different characters, you know, you run into these matchups. You get into something familiar, and and, and you, you want to, you know, it's... it's you know, every matchup is different. You know, you, you got to know how to play against certain characters. And Perfect Legend, it, does he have a true main? I don't think so. I think, especially with this game, you're seeing a lot of players have an arsenal of about two to three different characters, whether it's different variations in the same character or what have you. But either way, he has all of these characters ready. So if he comes up against a matchup he might not like with the Collector, boom, he has Kung Lao. He likes it. If he's going up against a matchup Shang he doesn't like Kung Lao with, boom, he's going to have another character at his disposal. He's one of those Lost players that will always have team. an answer to a matchup. And now on the flip side, on Kratos, we've only really seen Shang out of him. Yeah, yeah, we have. But PL did run into a Shang a little bit earlier in this pool, I believe, against El Kakui. But I don't remember exactly who each player was playing. I know it was a little bit of dancing around the fighters and live stream. But I think PL is in top shape today. He's looking great. PL great. did beat El Kakui to my knowledge. Yes. Even then, without, that was not an easy win. But a down two crushing blow to start us off. Huge damage. PL opting not to break. I'm a little surprised at that. Yeah, I mean, that's 37%. That is so, I mean, I, I believe it was, I don't know. I don't know. That was a lot of damage there from the down two. Great counter from Perfect Legend. Again, that mace. One of the greatest buttons to really hit on somebody's meaty. You can just go right outside of their wake-up range and really control the pace when they get up. 
Speaking of collector, no strangers with some really respectable damage there. Almost 33%. Nobody in love with these forward ones, but just not a lot of confidence in, in confirming them. Yeah, he's, he's trying to stagger, trying to keep him guessing, just keep him on his toes, getting a little bit of health back as that throw only does 12%. Big jump in here from Arn Kratos, but because he was in the corner, it didn't convert correctly. That could hurt, but he's just trying to tip him out at this point, and that will certainly do it. No last breath to work with the corpse drop. will close out the first round. Very strong. Round two. Arn Kratos has Fight. all that space to back up with if he chooses to do so. Oh, he's going the wrong way, and perfect legend. Taking him for a ride here, thanks to that teleport, forcing that breakaway, forcing those two bars. So now he's got no wake up resources at all. So one perfect legend knocks him down. It's time to play. And this is an absolutely party time for perfect legend. Going with a short hop into a 4 1. Not sure what that was, but regardless, still gets knocked down. Now, Mark Kratos has his time switching position. Has a lot of work to do if he wants to come back. Oh, looking for the short teleport, but PL did expend uh, the defensive bar there. Oh. Gets to get away, and that's a big crushing blow, 24%. Trying to get the follow-up here, but PL blocking, holding on to that block button, launches up and breaks away. Oh, it's just out of range of the fatal blow. You know what? It's not the end of the world. That fatal blow was not going to kill. That could have actually caused it, but now... Fight. Round number three, who's going to be able to take this first game? PL playing a lot more defensive now this time around. Yes, definitely is. Chucking the bola, ducking right under it, trying to avoid as much chip damage as possible. Great call out on the Amplify uh, Teleport there, using that defensive bar. Reversal counter, Perfect Legend trying to do something, whether that was backdashing or pressing a button, but he did not want to block, refused to block in that situation. Big jump in. Now that, that that string does have a gap, but most people assume you're not crazy enough to do it. And you know what? And that's good. That's good to throw it out there every once in a while, test the matchup knowledge I have. But you know what? Arn Cradle seems relatively comfortable in this matchup. He seems to know the gaps, he seems to know the right range to play at. But PL's making a lot of right reads, but no punish was, on a block boa. That was a full combo punish. Perfect Legend possibly wanted to, to, to cancel it, but just didn't. Just playing the patient game. Yeah, teleporting right in, 4-4. Gonna splat Kratos to the ground. No hit confirmed there, another miss punish. 4-4 again. Kratos does not want to get opened up. He got antsy, he got antsy. Is he gonna spend it? Is he gonna spend it? No, decides to hold on to it. Next touch from either player, should kill. He got him in the air, didn't convert to a full combo because of it. Throwing out the up skulls. This is so intense. The, the clock, seven seconds, but the punish on the fatal blow. Arm Kratos taking game number one. Way too close for comfort. He threw all caution to the wind and just dashed up, went for fatal blow. I mean, of course, hindsight is 2020, but Arm Kratos just sat there, blocked, waited for the opportunity. PL hung himself there at that last with that last fight. I think Arm Kratos was just staring Same at the clock scene. at that point. I think it was the smart move to make, but the fatal blow really just kind of risking it all. And honestly, I think I would have much rather seen him maybe dash in, go for shimmy, go for a grab, might be able to pull it out there. But regardless, still playing really well. Not out of it yet. That was by no means a one-sided match. Oh. But now we're seeing PL, like we talked about, all those different characters. It's time to go Kung Lao. I've heard, I, I feel like, I've heard this from a lot of people who play both Kung Lao and Shang Tsung, is that Shang Tsung really, would, if he's got those up skulls, he can control Kung Lao because Kung Lao jumps a lot. That's just how you play the character. So it's going to have to be a very different approach from PL, a little bit more conservative, not relying so much on jumping because those up skulls are going to play a big, big factor in this matchup. And that's much like we just saw there, the down two by Shang is such a good anti-air. One of the few down twos that really works from any range of the jump kick. And the confirm the follow-up. The Cradle is playing super solid right now, but PL going for a little bit more of a defensive play style. These trades are definitely not in his favor. And that was a very risky dive kick, but it did pay off for PL. Does get the conversion afterwards. Oh, he's going for a ride. Okay, one more touch. Right. Either one. Great ball block. That was key here in this tough situation, but he just does it. And just this boys off the interactable. Goes for the dive kick. If he blocked it. I can't believe he went for that. I actually can't believe he went for that. But regardless, it paid off for him. You move on. Sometimes you gotta throw out the risk. And now you have to. Corpse drops and sparks for days. It's just a defensive style. Little bits of damage, and he's just gonna back off. He wants nothing to do with that teleport. He said, I don't want to guess. I don't want to have to react to it. Just get away from me. And again, the Master Knowledge, she knows to just 
play right in that space, even with the orbiting hat around the teleport. Staying away, going for the health sparks to check on. And that's all it is. Oh, looking for a down two there. I believe I saw the startup animation. Great punish there of that spin. Not really sure what PL was hunting. This is four shots. Nice flawless block there. No bite on the shimmy. Arm cradles. This defense has been really impressive. I love the patience there from PL block. Are right, getting hit. Oh, hold on. As soon as I said I love the patience, here comes the fatal blow from downtown. Hey, but this is a questionable decision. It is very close, but you know what? He has the first round. If he feels it, he feels it. But that risk is definitely not going to pay off. It is now third round with no Fatal Blow to work with. Final yeah, a finite resource. You only get, as long as that Fatal Blow connects, it is gone. It is gone for the rest of the game. So PL needs to make the win the old-fashioned way. And that is such a huge victory if you're on Kratos. To yes. get hit by the Fatal Blow, now it's gone, and still win that round. He's on set point. Everything is just looking perfect for him. But PL... Not giving up just yet. He's throwing out a couple of uh, dive kicks. He's playing a lot more sporadic now, yeah. and I think it's yeah. well. And, and it, it's doing so great for him right now. He's in a groove. He's in a rhythm. You can never count out Perfect Legend. I mean, this is a multiple Evo champion, specifically an MK9 back-to-back -back Evo champion. Hold on, and there he is. He's here to play, tying it up one to one. And you just see this. You just see how much more comfortable he is with Kung Lao. He's been playing the character pretty much since day one. Collector was someone he picked up a little bit more down the road after release. But just he just seems to really click with this character. It doesn't matter if whether it's the hit confirms or the play style behind the teleports or the mind games behind the grabs. He just seems to have it all fleshed out. And now Arm Kratos is going to stick a warlock. There's no doubt in my mind he's Loyalist through and through. But you know what? You know, PL has to be thinking, or somewhere in his mind has got to be the idea of I should have pick Kung Lao out the gate. I should have picked Kung Lao at the gate, uh, and this would have been a little Great. bit better for him, but unfortunately, Man. we're not there. It's 101. Final game right here. We're starting off with the health sparks. Now, P.O. off a of defensive meter in the first two seconds of the game. You're seeing Arm Kratos go straight in. He wants to deal as much damage while no breakaway is available. And here it is. A respectful 26%. Yeah, not the most damaging combo, but, you know, considering how great his zoning is, I think it fits him pretty well. I think it was fine. <laughs> it was a little bit of a change. He used to hit like an absolute truck, but oh, yeah. even now, looking at the little bits of damage that even PL's throwing out with these hats. Yes, yes, and I love the, the meticulous setup that Perfect Legend did set up there. Had the orbiting hat, goes for the dive kick, and the orbiting hat covered the punishment route, keeping Perfect Legend very safe in that situation. Uh, finish the string, goes with a little bit of a skull, a little bit of extra damage, I like it. I don't know if he wanted dive kick. I did hear a little error there from an attempt to break away. At this point, it's pretty much muscle memory, but he didn't have two bars of defensive meter quite yet. So Arn Kratos on a match point, getting right through his perfect legend with that dive kick, forces the break away, and the down two. Everything is really starting to work out for Arn Kratos. A little down two. Even though he doesn't have any defensive meter to work with, that's why he's backing off right now. He's going to stay as far away from PL as possible until he sees some of that defensive meter come back. Exactly. Minimize the risk any way you can. Especially because Shang doesn't really have a way to spend defensive bars, specifically with his moveset. Of course, he can use a wake-up attack or a forward or back roll. But he doesn't need to right now. He's backing off. He is out zoning, and PL needs to find his way in. And this is where it can start. He has to make something happen right now, but a down three spin laying it all out on the line, and Arm Kratos will advance to the top 16 on the winner's side, knocking PL into losers. Not out of it just yet. Not out yet. But down three spins. We saw a lot of risks out of PL oh, there. Yes, we Some did. Some of them did pay off. That dive kick earlier on in the set did give him that round, but the raw fatal blow and then the down three spin, it just, it was the nail in the coffin. So hopefully he ends up tightening that up a little bit as he moves on into the bracket. Yeah. Because otherwise, he's been playing really solid. He has, he has been. I would have liked to seen a little bit more throwing there, especially, you know, you have to uh, assess the situation. Every player plays different. Some people are more hesitant to hold on a block and they want to jump, they want to press buttons. Yeah. Some players are okay with just blocking and, and they'll wait for their moment. And I feel like Arn Kratos is one of those players. I so, think so too. We yeah. were talking about it before about how Arm Kratos, his defense was just unbelievable. Oh, yeah. He wasn't getting opened up by any shimmies. The grab techs were pretty much there. Even though PL didn't really go for a lot of them, when they happened, Arm Kratos was there ready for it. And otherwise, just controlling that space, even though that is where Shane thrives, up close, he just seemed pretty much dominant everywhere on the screen.
It's, it's, yeah, man, it's, it, I'm seeing a lot of great things there out of Ron Kratos, so I'm really excited that he is in the top 16 on the winner side. So, so far we have Sonic Fox, Ninja Killa, Arn Kratos, and Combat making it out in the sea pools, staying in the winner side. And top 16 is gonna be later tonight. So you definitely don't wanna go anywhere. Uh, Perfect Legend now getting knocked into the uh, the losers finals where he's gonna be facing Gurr, who also lost Arn Kratos earlier in this pool. Interesting. And now we're moving on. I believe this is definitely a loser side match. We have uh, Zork going up against Doom. I would assume this would be for top 16 losers. Yes, it is. So yes, we will is. be seeing all that. Zork we saw earlier playing Jackie, I believe upgraded if I'm not mistaken. And Doom is a Sonya player through and through. We saw at ECT, he had a pretty dominant showing. I think he got 33rd, if I'm not mistaken. Jackie and then he had that nail biter of a match Sonya. against Dizzy. Cyber oh, I was, that was Assembly. so sick to watch. And <laughs> honestly, Doom, you could tell, hasn't really been around for a very long time. Um, Placements wise, hasn't really broken into like the top 16, but the potential is there. You see the knowledge in the fighting games. He has really solid patience and the execution is definitely there. But the same can be said for Zork. I was relatively Round unsure of who he played, fight. but after seeing his set against combat, he is not someone to be messed with. So this is potentially going to be a really juicy set. Granted, this is loser side, like you said. Yes. This is it. Loser is done for the tournament. You've placed in the top 32, and that's it. The winner will be able to advance on later on and play tonight, which should be around 8 p.m. Eastern. Yes, yes, 8 p.m., guys, so you don't want to go anywhere. Zork being, I believe he's from the New York City area, one of the boroughs, so relatively local. Uh, has been going to a lot of local events and just put in work, and the work is paying off here. He actually almost Same. missed, he missed his bus coming here to NEC and had to get on another one oh and God. almost didn't make it here, but he's having a fantastic showing. Uh, big shout outs to Doom for rocking his uh, Barnacle Boy outfit. I don't know if you caught on to I, that. I was wondering what that was because I was trying to put like everything together. I'm like, all right, I see the hat. And then I didn't notice it was Barnacle Boy till I saw the blue cape. I'm like, wait. Everything's starting to make sense. I just noticed the glove on his left arm as well. Okay. Yes, he is Barnacle Boy, and his girlfriend, I believe, is dressed up as Mermaid Man. So great, great <laughs> little cosplay here. All right, but now this is for the top 16 on the loser side. Doom and Zork rocking their respective characters that we've seen earlier on this afternoon. Upgraded Jackie out of Zork and Ringmaster Sonya, as we would normally used to see. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Nothing, nothing no surprises here. They go play in the spacing game. And I noticed, you know, obviously Sonya is the rushdown monster, but I've noticed Doom really likes to play a little bit more of a patient game. Yes. Oh, but it down two to crack the teeth. It hurts. Oh, going for the dash punch, getting a little negative there as Sonya gets up a little bit sooner than Jackie anticipated. No whiff punish there on that jump in, reaching in. So Doom's got to assess the situation and no, but it's just so scary because upgraded Jackie has so many options once she leaves the ground. And he goes for the hard knockdown, almost 38%, and a forward grab to follow up. Now Doom does have Fatal Blow. He might let it whip. One touch should be able to close it out for either player. The bait. Wait, the jump kick and the breakaway. Wait a minute, what's gonna happen? I don't know what's gonna happen. Oh my god, the down three into the tackle. That was so risky. Down pokes do not combo into any special moves. Uh, there's a few exceptions to that, like orbiting hat. But in that situation, if Zork just kept blocking after getting hit with that poke, he would have been able to block and fully punish that leg sweep. I like, I like the idea that Doofus had there. He's trying to go for that crushing blow off of Sonya's anti-air. That might be the way to go about it in this matchup. Play defensive and just scout out those jumps. But honestly, Zork is all over him right now. Thankfully, Doom switching positions here. Oh, that's a big whiff. Off. That was a big whiff, and that could have been really, really bad for Zork here. But Doom let it go. Great anti-air right into the crushing blow. The face just eating the pavement there. Unfortunate drop for Doom. The crushing blow is gone, and like so goes like that second round with it. Moving into the third round here. Doom, a little bit of a meter deficit there, but nonetheless, still playing really well. And we're seeing the solid defense, but getting cracked in the face. Yes, that's, a, that's a full screen crushing blow there, but a crushing blow of Sonya's own there. Getting hit by that amplified ring by itself does lead into some good damage. 24% ain't bad at all. Now here comes Zork again. Definitely gonna spend the second bar. Hopefully Doom gets off of that meter. No, tried to read the breakaway. Goes for the down two. 
Yeah, definitely. Uh, it, it, that's that's why he is an unintentional side switch here by Zork. But hey, he was able to clean up and take this first game over. Doom, Zork having a fantastic showing so far. So much on the line here. Listen, if I'm Zork right now, I'm thinking about how happy I am I caught that second boss. <laughs> I mean, you're taking a look. That was a beautiful third round. He, I think he's going just more aggressive. Round he one. seemed in the beginning to kind of just walk his way in. But remember, Upgraded has all the mobility you could possibly ask for. And I think now he's finally starting to use it. I mean, that's, that, that's a great way to sum it up. Mobility, when you can jump in from oh. anywhere on the screen, down to Crushing Blow, going to convert into a lot of damage. Goes for the aggressive breakaway to try to punish Jackie on the recovery frames there. But to no avail, still gets the momentum in his side. Looking for the anti-air, but Jackie wasn't quite there yet. Takes her down here with a leg sweep. And again, you know, Zoom trying his best to anti-air Jackie, but again, you have to kind of guess. You have to know when she's going to mess with her trajectory, when she's going to commit to the regular jump in. There's just so many options, so hard to cover all of them. And th that's the that's the perfect way to look at it because even though he's trying to anti-air, he doesn't want to overextend it. If he doesn't think it's going to anti-air, he's not going to go for it. And I think that's what's helping him keep these life leads because one little Round mistake two. on an anti-air against upgraded Jackie, you're eating at least 32%. And now Doom taking the first round has a chance to put us in a one-one. Yes, definitely does. Take a little time. Yeah, down pokes here. Jackie jumping in for a full combo. Does have the corner positioning here, so going to do a little bit extra damage. And Doom breaking away at the very end of that combo. I don't know if I agree with it. Yeah, that was a super late breakaway now. And now he has to deal with all of this corner pressure, plus frames across the board. Like, you have no defensive meter. This is your home now for the remainder of the round. But thankfully, the little side switch there, and now it's his turn. Oh, he dropped the ring cancel. He dropped the ring cancel, but gets her. Beautiful whiff punish here. Oh no, misses the misses the confirm on that. And honestly, that that was the best way to go about that. One, three, four, right in the fatal blow. You already won the first round. Let it happen, and here we go. Can we talk about that induced salt moment? They're going straight into fighter select, I, I, looking desperately for that restart match, but it was disabled. But I don't know, man. Some people hate this, hate the option to go right into it. I think it's a great way to just kind of illuminate how under their skin you got. When, some, when you're playing someone in a tournament setting and they go right to rematch or fighter select, you know so you got under their skin. You know they're playing on tilt right now. And you can see it in Zork's face. He's obviously not very happy about that, but it's not really that he was making a lot of mistakes. I think there were just a lot of hard reads on Doom's side. And then that unfortunate side switch into the corner that gave Doom all that space to work with. I killed him. I mean, having your back in the corner against Sonya is like a top five NRS nightmare. <laughs> Now yeah, go. when you're up in the corner, you have nowhere to go. Very little real estate to play with. So, you know, it's a lot harder to, to you know, predict what your opponent's going to be doing exactly. when your, your movement is so predictable. Now, four grabs. We're seeing a lot more grabs out of June now. I like it. I like the switch to really not really focus on the 50-50s, but go for the striker grab game. Yeah, yeah. Keeping it simple here. Great little delay wake up there, getting him on the recovery frames and just Round cleaning up, cleaning up fight. like nothing. This is dominance from Doom. The momentum has not shifted yet. And there we go. Uh, pretty much exchanging whips there, and now Zork forcing Doom off of the meter and to confirm the follow-up. This is definitely looking like Zork's round right now. Well, as easy as you have a life lead, it can be taken away. And that is exactly what Doom looks like to do. Look at all of this pressure, cancel pressure. Oh! And it's down two. And that is not an easy thing to do against Jackie, but he drops the follow-up. Doom, what are you doing? Hold on, you got Fatal Blow, so it's okay. Doom, clean it up. And Zork wants to see none of that. Going down, getting 17th place here in Pool C4. Unfortunate for Zork. He had a great showing. That was tough. That was a tough, tough bracket. For it him. seemed it seemed like that set was going to be his, but Doom made a few adjustments, went way more on the staggers in the striker grab game, and that's where it started to pay off. And just a little bit of the exchange on the whiffs, unfortunately, just paid out for uh, for Doom there. It did it did it did? I would have liked to see a little bit more restraint from Zork. And again, he's a new player, newcomer. I would have liked to see him, you know, take the approach of let me just go to character select. Let me breathe. Right. Let me figure out why did I lose? Why is he understanding everything I'm doing? But he didn't. He didn't even want to watch the the, the, the fatality screen, <laughs> a possible fatality that could have came. 
he just went right into fighter select and you just go fast, fast, fast. Some players can operate like that, but I think more times than none, it, it's better to just kind of take that breath. I, and I, I'm one of the other players, like when I was competing, you need to take a step back. It's yes. just the easiest way to kind of assess everything that's going on. And things might have been really different between them if he took a step back, but Doom's adaptation really just exceeded Zorix, and I think that's really what the, the main focal point of the set was. But now we are moving on to PL against Gur. Now this is interesting. Yeah, yeah. This definitely. is interesting. Tell me. Hayate was in this pool. He was. He lost to Gur in, uh, I want to say, losers round three. Wow, so Very Hayate's bad. eliminated. Yes, Hayate is eliminated. And the other player that's eliminated is uh, Jelly Jiggler, the player formerly known as Tweety. Wait. Is eliminated from the tournament. Yes, Tweety lost to Doom, actually, in that pool that we just saw on the, on the, on the lower side. That is, that is an upset. That is an upset. That is 100% an upset because I'm looking over here. Jelly Jiggler, a.k.a. Tweety, as of this weekend, before any of the action started, was sitting at 10th in the pro competition with 645 points. Now, we've said time and time again, this is the last stop for the pro competition. Last one. Not including the LCQ, of course, but still, being at 10th with 645, the rest of the points of people that are right behind him, you know, Scar in 11th with 595, Samij in 12th with 455, Combat in 13th with 395. These are very small gaps in points. There is a timeline where Tweety gets knocked way farther down than he wants to be. Good Does it mean he won't qualify for the finals? We don't know. We're gonna have to wait to see how this weekend goes. But him being eliminated like that is a really, really stressful situation for him. Hayate a little bit farther off, sitting at eighth place in the pro competition with 730 points. He's essentially guaranteed. While this is not the best confidence booster for him, he can still take it as a learning experience and move forward. The pressure is still off. The future is still bright. And now, Gur, rocking Garrus. I wonder which variation he's going to pick. He has been playing a lot of Eternal. And then PL, as we talked about before, millions of different characters. Right now, we'll be seeing Collector. Yeah, Perfect Legend, kind of. And again, this is a button check, so he's not committed to this character. But I've been seeing PL start a lot of these sets as Collector here. Now, Gur, I would say, is probably not a, a player that is unfamiliar with pretty much any matchup. Uh, he plays a lot, plays with the best players over and over again on, you know, this game's amazing netcode. So all the matchup knowledge is anybody's. As long as you're able to, you know, campaign, go out there, find those matchups, find those players, get those games, anyone can do it. And Gur can absolutely do it here. Not qualified for final combat just yet. One of those players that is just outside of it. So if Gur has a really great showing, possibly wins this event, he could qualify. He needs to place incredibly high. I, I yes, love how, very high. I love how everyone goes to shake PL's hand, but he likes the fist bump because, he, you know, hands get clammy, you get nervous, he doesn't want to exchange any of that. But now, this is an important match for both guarded, players, but collector. more so for Gur, because again, he needs at least a fourth Round place to one. really, you know, really have a chance at the finals. Because no one really wants to have them focus on winning an LCQ to make it to the finals. But now, that is PL <laughs> getting a grab to connect. And we're seeing spare change. We haven't seen this out of PL yet. Yeah, going with spare change where he's going to be throwing a lot of green fire on the ground and on top of his opponent. So whenever you see the opponent on fire or the ground they're standing on on fire, it's doing damage over time. Gurr getting a little tricky here. Going with the command grab, getting that little damage boost thanks to the corner. That is such a dirty setup. It is. It, it pretty is. much guarantees either a forward two or exploding the teleport, going for a follow-up afterwards. But even now, look at all the damage Gur is taking from that, from pretty much the poison. Yes, the DOT is very serious. Damage over time, as long as you're standing on top of those flames. And I already see why he went spare change. He could lob that, the, the vial over that teleport, over yep. the clone, to make sure that he stays away from it. And he's pretty much essentially getting free damage right now. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Again, look at the DOT doing so much. Gur letting those hit on the floor there, teleporting, using that clone. And what a flawless block to stop the jump in here. Gur confirming right into that up two gear. So that's one of the best flawless block up twos in the business. And 
Gurr's done so well working on those flawless blocks. I have not seen him do it this much ever in the pro competition. And it has saved him time and time again and carrying PO all the way to the corner. The momentum is starting to shift. Down 2-2. Two, two. Pretty much stuffed that up to attempt on PL. Couple down twos in there, and here comes the setup. What is it gonna be? Nice defense, and that is guaranteed as well. You have to guess. <laughs> oh no, it hurts, it hurts so bad. Checking the interactables, go for the teleport instead of the sand explosion. And here comes the frog splash here from Gears and Gurr, solidifying that first game, trying to make his way into the top 16 on the lower side over Perfect Legend, two time Mortal Kombat 9 Evo champion. And you can always tell that regardless of what the game is, PL's yes. knowledge in fighting games will always be there. Absolutely. The fundamentals, fundamentals carry over. It is. It's like riding a bicycle. You know, maybe <laughs> you have to shake off the rust a little bit, but the knowledge is always going to be there. And now he's looking at a different character that we actually haven't talked about. I have not seen him play Scorpion. Mind you, I'm pretty sure I just saw Variation 3, so which is going to be Misery Blade. Misery Blade and the MKX Neutral Jump Punch. Which I thought was a super cool addition. Oh, yes. Just for the record, I have to stand a little bit. I thought that was super sick. <laughs> it was great, man. A great throwback and a reference to Mortal Kombat X. I mean, I just love all the, the little details that they put into the game. So now, Perfect Legend with Misery Blade, he's going to have access to canceling the blade stance, hitting him with the nub, which uh, hits mid, or going for the very risky overhead or low option. And there it is. That's the, the MKX neutral jump punch. Yeah, I'm trying to figure yeah. out why PL would go Scorpion in this matchup. Uh, to just shut off the options, possibly trying to react to anything Gears does, because Scorpion does have the ability to do that with his teleport, but right now it's not really working out for him. But hold on, getting it started here. Gonna convert the damage, not commit to the spear because he knew the breakaway was available. So smart stuff here by Perfect Legend. Super intelligent. By both players, honestly. Gur trying to get that punish in there by breaking away Lit and PL scouting that out. And now he's not out of it just yet. One little touch can really put it back in, but the shimmy into the forward two. Gur taking the first round on set point to advance into the loser's top 16. PL not out of it just yet, but really needs to make something happen. Oh, great flawless block here from Gur, knowing that Perfect Legend was gonna block right after that and possibly go for it. Oh Hold my on! God. How did he know? How did he know it's when to do this? Every single time, his timing is just absolutely perfect. Beautiful mind game there with the clone. Just goes for the command grab and gives it to him again. 150 damage, 15% every single time, and just this corner lockdown. Interactable to follow up. This is all Gur. PL on his last legs here at NEC. He goes for the teleport, the punish to follow, and Gur will swiftly take that two to zero. And Perfect Legend tried to mix it up there a little bit at the end, not amplifying the teleport, even though he had the meter to do so. He was just trying to get Gur to, to think that the amplified second it was coming, but Gur was on top of it, man. That thing said punish, Gur was right on it. Those reactions from Gur, incredible. The reactions, but again, the flawless blocks. Like He's quickly becoming one of the best in the scene to really have the flawless blocks, whether it's off of pokes, whether it's off of jump attacks, and that really does shift the momentum because oh, it yeah. might force someone off of a breakaway like what we saw there a few times, actually. That's what helped them keep that life lead, and then the mind games with Eternals just... Oh, it's man, just so it's dirty. So good. It's so good. Command grab, command grab before the clone, command grab after the clone. You just don't know, and that command grab one of the few command grabs that hits as a mid in this game, so you have to jump it. And we all know how scary it is to jump. Especially against Garrus. Oh, of, yeah. of all <laughs> characters, oh, Garrus, you don't want to jump at, but no, you you're don't. pretty much forced to at that point. And now, speaking of scary characters. All right, so we have uh, Coach Steve going up against a Biohazard. Now, that last match was the Losers Finals, and Gur is going to be advancing over Perfect Legend. This is our last Losers Finals of C Pool, C1. Losers Finals is Coach Steve versus Biohazard. Now, we saw Biohazard had a great showing against the wondrous Sonic Fox, who has claimed they were going all collector this tournament. And you know, it looked like Biohazard had it under control with Ripper. And Sonic Fox, always able to clutch it out. And, always. I mean, that's just the type of player that Fox is, you know? <laughs> and then Biohazard, I mean, that set was phenomenal. I had the mm -hmm. 
pleasure of getting to watch that over here on the table. And I'm telling you right now, I was so impressed again with the flawless box. It's really seeming to be the meta with especially the aggressive characters. You know, you take your turns, but when it's not your turn, you have to instill that fear of the flawless block reversal, which Bio really seems to be perfecting over these past few months. And it's really starting to show, but he's gonna be going up against Coach Steve, fresh off a of top eight at ECT, phenomenal performance. And regardless of the third variations that were added, still sticking with first round knockout. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Uh, one of the few Jackie Wait. players actually. Jackie oh well, we did see Biohazard the using hour. Terminator. Let's go. Uh, I'm trying to remember who did Bio beat. Was it right before Sonic Fox? I remember seeing a command grab connecting right with Terminator. Sonic. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to get back to you. I I commentated that with Destroyer just earlier. Not. Not even an hour ago, but it was so hype, I actually don't remember half the set. Yeah, so sometimes you get that amnesia <laughs> when you just have that hype overload. And again, guys, this is Pool C1, so you guys can follow home along. Go to smash.gg, look for NEC Mortal Kombat 11. A great down one here by Terminator, and I didn't know Jackie could get under that last one 2 one hit there. I feel like that's gonna play a big factor in this matchup. That's really scary. If Coach Steve knows the matchup or even can pick up on that quick enough, he could start with punishing one of Terminator's best strengths in the neutral, and even then, catching Biohazard. Biohazard, one of the few players to actually hold on to his defensive meter because he loves flawless blocks. Loves it, loves it. That flawless block up two is coming, no doubt about it. Great blocks here from Biohazard, trying to stay patient. Coach Steve trying to bait something out. Gets the forward throw here. Biohazard in a bad spot. I believe one throw away from dying here in the corner. The overhead connecting, but doesn't commit to the fatal blow. And I think that would have been enough, but he just didn't believe. Oh, that definitely will. Did you see how fast Coach Steve broke away? He was able to react over, yeah. to getting hit by that overhead, attempted to break away, but those quick reactions were his demise. As you can see down there on the bottom right, Coach Steve having cry. no defensive meter. So Biohazard gets the knockdown. It is party time. Listen, man, you get hit by that forward too. There is no escape from that. Beautiful dunk by Biohazard. And again, the mix is just really starting to pay off. This is the type of play style that we know Biohazard to have. It is in your face, aggressive, and just unrelenting. I mean, command grab after command grab. He won't stop! Dead. It is that flawless victory here from Biohazard. Please make a statement. Give me a fatal. No. Either way, flawless victory and absolute steamrolling here from Biohazard. If you give this man a command grab, he will make any character work. I'm any pretty, character work. I'm pretty work. sure I said like, one sentence and the round was over. <laughs> he touched him twice and it was done. But that is where Terminator excels. Not the best in the mid screen, but up close, an absolute monster with the overhead and low starter. Tick grabs accompanied along with it as well. And he is just making work of Coach Steve here, pushing him a little bit closer to the corner, going for the run stance command grab here. Mid now, as well. Yes, 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 yes. You have to jump it, but once you jump it, you gotta. Big combo. You have all the time in the world. If that command grab whips, you have all the time in the world to punish. But that's Excellent the thing. He could not command grab and actually cancel it into that uppercut you see there. So Round very two. tricky stuff. A lot of guessing happening here. Coach Steve used that breakaway at the very end of the round, and that is definitely going to cost him here. I mean, this this game number two is all Biohazard right now. Coach Steve hasn't really had a chance to even play, and this is exactly what we know out of Biohazard. Non-stop momentum and just unrelenting pressure. I am pretty sure he's dead. He won't and stop. And he is definitely dead. He won't stop. And, and Coach Steve can't even, even believe his eyes. I literally read his lips. He goes, that was fast. <laughs> His eyes told me everything. I wish we could get a slow motion replay of what he said. I guarantee he was like, that was fast. That was so fast. Bio has it, like, he, this, that's what he needs, man. He needs Oki and he needs a command grab. And I think Terminator fits that perfectly. Biohazard reacting to no delay wake up, slight delay wake up, and long delay wake up, and then saying, I'm going for my mix. I'm hitting you with the low, I'm hitting you with the overhead, or I'm hitting you with the command grab. So take your pick, buddy. Choose your poison. And then just all the damage to follow up along with all those. Like, it, Terminator seems to really fit his play style. You know, he oh, comes yeah. from Kano, Ripper especially, where it's just nonstop command grabs. But the risk was so high. Terminator, that risk has definitely been reduced with all the different mind games, and even just being safe in general. I think it's a really good pick from him. I'm happy we finally had a chance to see Terminator. The only Terminator we've seen, or at least I've seen on stream, but successful as can be in the top 16, while it's in the loser's bracket, 
Still going to be seeing him on later tonight. Oh, yes. Yes, yes, we are. So if you've got some Terminator hype left in you, don't go anywhere because right after this block, we're jumping right into the top 16 where Biohazard has a qualified. I mean, absolutely incredible. And, and really, that's what it is. That shows you what a damaging overhead that you can't react to, how well it complements that command grab because you're scared of the low, you're scared of the overhead. So when Biohazard knows you're gonna block, here comes command grab and he just puts you in that same situation over and over again. And that's really something that Kano doesn't have. And that's really like a box that's not really checked off when Biohazard plays Kano. It's how am I gonna make anyone afraid of my overhead? Terminator, everybody's afraid of that overhead because it leads into so much damage. And then even then, all, he was keeping it relatively basic. There are so many layers, you know, the low you can tick into the command grab, but that's only for when people start catching on to your antics. So yeah, I think we're gonna yeah. be seeing a lot more. There was plenty more tools at Bio's disposal, but he kept it simple and that was the way to go. Sometimes you don't have to be all cute with your mix-ups. No. Keep it simple and especially with damage like that, that's how you advance into the top 16. But now Deadly Rebel back on the screen. A Bernadoni. heartbreaking loss earlier. Yes, 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 it was. And uh, this is going to be, again, the losers finals of the C pools. This is the losers finals of C2. Jeez. Our final C pool losers finals. I think I misspoke earlier and said that the last one was, but I didn't read my note card just quite right. Uh, so Deadly Rebel, we saw him doing fantastic against Ninja Killa. That was that was an incredible. I've never seen Ninja Killa so shook in my life. And it's funny because you can't tell from his facial expressions, but you saw it in the gameplay. He had a lot of drops going on. And Deadly Rebel, really, I even spoke to him afterwards during our break. He had it, and I guess the fatal blow didn't come out, so he got the full string instead, and then Ninja Killa just caught him whiffing, and it was all over. He has to shake that off. I know that's going to be in the back of his mind because otherwise he will be done for, you know, pretty oh. much the next few hours until top 16 winners. Exactly. Now he's got to fight through. He can make it happen, but this is a stressful situation. You know, last NEC or last pro competition Round event fight. until the LCQ, he wants to be able to place really high. And now we're finally getting to see, hopefully if he sticks with it after this button check, is uh, Untamable Jade, Variation 3. I yeah, haven't really seen a lot of it at all. Yeah, she she has a, a lot of things that kind of, and I feel like this has kind of been like a constant theme with Jade, is she, she likes to control those projectiles, whether she's turning on the purple stuff to become immune to projectiles or reflecting them back with her staff spin. So it's really interesting stuff because, you know, this is, I, I wonder what that staff spin is going to do to, you know, those specific projectiles that is fair change to let in. The, in the air, throwing out those vials. I'm not sure how that's gonna, what the properties are on that to reflect them. Yeah, what comes back? Does yeah. a regular projectile come back or does it? Does the, the, the DOT come back? I'm Maybe sure nothing even happens. <laughs> it's like Noob Saibot, if you reflect his clones, nothing happens. <laughs> and Nightwolf, just throwing that out there. But anyway, we're gonna move on from now. That could go on a tangent, but that's fine. So here we go, another match to see who qualifies for Losers Top 16 here at NEC Collector out of Deadly Rebel. Wrong. It promised no return on my investment. Defending your realm's honor is not enough. I love, love the intros, realm. man. I, I have to watch them. I do, too. I do, too. I love how you can hear the, the difference when the character's wearing a mask. Yeah. I mean, that effect is perfect. Absolutely perfect yeah. here. I always have to. I have to pay attention to this. But now, so we're going to see a little bit of Untamable. does have a couple new strings at the disposal with her back, too. Um, no Air Glaive, obviously. Mm -hmm. Air Glaive specific to the Variation 1. Hold on, trying to get in there. But uh, Deadly Rebel being very patient, blocking all these offensive moves here. Oh, I think he missed the timing on that Flawless Spark. Got hit by the second of the 4 4 then had to force himself to break away from that. And Deadly Rebel, you are seeing a lot more gimmicks coming out right out the start. A lot of roller cancels, a lot of pokes, a lot of, pretty much just a lot of everything that we are not used to seeing. Oh yeah, 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 definitely. And uh, again, I'm just kind of paying attention to how well this variation can utilize that back too. You never know when she's gonna cancel into the rest of it. And uh, this this variation also gets a specific sweep. A specific sweep that hits multiple times and extends a little bit longer than it does in the other variations. Chucking out the projectiles as uh, Deadly Rebel just trying to stay patient, trying to find his opening, trying to connect uh, with those, those lantern tosses. But hold on, he was ready. He was absolutely ready at the hit of those two buttons going right into the fatal blow. And this is gonna be enough. A big slice of the throat here and Deadly Rebel 
making a statement, but using that finite resource that we all know as Fatal Blow. You want to talk about reactions. That was picture perfect. Just go ahead and throw out the Fatal Blow. He needed to be able to do that. And now, great block of the overhead. A little bit slow, but definitely a, a contender here when it comes to Jade's arsenal, uh, especially when it's up close. Go goes for the setup instead. Still a respectable amount of damage, honestly. Almost 28% yeah. and then leading into the setup. Yeah, I mean, uh, overall, the sum of that damage is overwhelming. I guess the escape failed as well. Jade does have a crushing blow grab off of her forward grab. That does lead into a combo, so we might be able to see that. Deadly Rebel taking his time. Oh, that was not definitely a mistake. And it could have been a bigger punish there for Deadly Rebel, but I don't think he, I don't think he believed. He didn't commit to that forward three. Ducking right under, trying to find some DOT situations. Deadly Rebel not trying to take any risk at all here as he lunges in with that forward three, going right into the full string, hit confirming just enough here, and that's gonna be all she wrote. And that's exactly what I kind of expected. Just pure solid play from everywhere on the screen. I was a little concerned. A lot of people don't have matchup knowledge against that variation of Jay, but he seemed to be really comfortable, blocked, Pretty much everything that's new to that variation and just didn't get caught by any gimmicks. It was just solid play all around. Now, Burning Odie is going back to character select screen. I would imagine he's going to switch variations. Possibly, possibly switching variations. He was getting a little bit of coaching there from uh, Viz. Shout out to Viz holding down the Philly scene. And uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what Viz told him. But again, another Jade specialist. A down two specialist, if you will. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Come on, we all know that's the, that is the specialty, man. It's so good, it's so good. Now, I believe he did, he did switch to Jaded. Obviously, Daily Rebel will be sticking with Spare Chase. Easy opening off the beginning, and a late breakaway as well, no punish to follow up. I think that's what he was going for there. I feel like, especially in the, when you're going up against Collector in the spare change variation, I feel like those aggressive late breakers are not worth it. Because most of the time, if they know you have breaker, they're just going to set up DOT. So whether you're breaker or not, he's going to be okay. And you're going to be eating a lot of green DOT damage on your wake up. And speaking of DOT, I mean, all he has to do is just sit back and do this. Oh, hold on, okay. Jaden okay. running right through it. Well, it's time for one staggers, but no last breath, and honestly, just confirming it's that very Aaron Black esque to just kind of close out that round. And now, Deadly Rebel on the verge of making top 16, yet another collector in the top 16. It is possible, it is possible. Hold on, Jaded going in with that running stance, stabbing him right in the head as she just jumps on, plays piggyback. Hunting down that back roll, absolutely textbook. Beautiful play here by Bernanoni. Now Collector's got his back up against the corner. Mobility a little bit limited. No real estate to play with. No real estate to shimmy back and forth with. Hits him with a big base. They go the up three. Such a good range on that. I want to see Bernie Odie get in. Jaded is good at locking characters down on the ground. It is time to stay in, but misses the punish and an escape failed to follow. Deadly Rebel. The next grab will do a lot of damage. They're just playing patient now. Oh, he's trying to paint him out to doing something, possibly committing to a forward three. But you now Deadly Rebel not biting, being very patient, wanting to stay back. And there it is, the purple stuff is activated, ready to go. Going to be immune to projectiles for a very short amount of time before I can even finish the sentence. Throwing the glaives here, going for it. That leaves her very negative, and she had the, 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 Bravery, the courage oh, to absolutely. hit down one after being so negative in that situation. At that point, you're so close to winning that round. Maybe just mash it out. When in doubt, mash it out, okay? That's the monster mash. All right. Nice little optimization there. 20% jaded, obviously, you know, as a character, doesn't really do a ton of damage, but every little bit counts. And this corner pressure is actually really scary. Going for a little bit of damage again, and just look how much she has a life lead by in just a short amount of time. That's a huge life lead. I love how she didn't commit to uh, anything really devastating there, just going for that short little butterfly kick and being able to block even though he rolled right past it. This is a bad spot here from Deadly Rebel. He's got to make the comeback. Didn't anticipate the follow-up here. Oh, the 4-3 connects, but didn't go in anything big here. It's not out of it just yet, but the chip damage is definitely starting to be an issue. Chim Shimmy's over the forward one. Okay, this is the start. This is what Deadly Rebel needs. No breakaway for Burning Odie. The setup, the follow, the hit confirmed. 
He just did happening? it! He just did it! I don't know why he just did it. He was so sure he was gonna press something. He was so sure he was gonna jump after that situation, but Bernanoni showing how he got here, how he got into the Losers Finals oh. by being an incredible Jade player. What it's, a set so It's far. just so hard to see that happen. That is the second time he had the pretty much the round done with a fatal blow. Messed it up again. He needs to shake it off. It is time. We're in game number three. If you want to go in the top 16, short-term memory. It's yeah. time to move on. I mean, yeah, you can't change the past. You can't let the little mistakes bother you at all. You need to keep on trucking. As simple as that. Turning on the purple stuff. Didn't get a punish. Actually, was a counter. Not sure what Bernanoni was trying to do afterwards. Possibly backdashing to get a little bit more space between himself and his opponent. Oh, looking for something. And this time, now Deadly Rebel adjusting to it, anticipating the amplified shadow kick. But no punish to follow up. He really needs to get used to this timing. Nice looking from there on the full three. Going to do a respectable amount of damage. I'm oh, just going to end it a little bit earlier. Still 28%. And this should definitely be Deadly Rebel's round. Oh, not quite yet. Oh, there it is, the mace. I mean, it's, it's so great. All you have to do is get out of range of that up three, and you can really hold down a character once you knock them down. There we go. And this is that sweet spot that Collector likes being. Nice little, I like the risk from Burning Oni. He hates that range, especially against Collector. Do the shadow kick and get out of it. And now, Deadly Rebel. A lot more defensive this time around. Okay, nice scout on the down two. That would have done a lot of damage. Beautiful shimmy to follow up. And again, no breakaway available by Burning Ocean. Got the DOT, so much green fire on the screen, and that's gonna be a full combo punish here from Deadly Rebel. Gonna try to confirm as much damage as possible. And oh my god, the crushing blow! Wait, but no follow-up. I mean, nope. but at this point, no, nothing else to work with. That was pretty much all Deadly Rebel. Even the poison just would have killed at that yeah. point. Yeah. Deadly Rebel doesn't, it looks like Deadly Rebel lost. Like he just didn't <laughs> seem happy about that, but he did make it into the top 16, eliminating Burning Oni, Burning Oni from the tournament. Still an impressive showing. Top 32 is definitely nothing to, you know, hang your head over. Oh, no, 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 Especially definitely Especially in this not. competition. No way. No of that. No way, no way, no way. I think the, the what you saw there at the end was maybe a little bit of the frustrations from Deadly Rebel knowing that he's got to play his A game if he wants to make it far in this competition. Right. And I don't think that was his full potential there, dropping a few follow-ups, especially after that crushing blow hit at the end. Right. A little uncertainty that I'm seeing. At least that's what I'm reading from you know his face, his his mannerisms, and his body language. Is he's not happy with himself. He's okay that he won, made it, but he wants he, he's he's a competitor. We're all competitors, so we know how much that win really means, and we know what it takes to be the best. And you know, what, and it's one of those things too where. When you make mistakes with the fatal blow, you know, not connecting the fatal blow, yeah, yeah. that could have went an absolute disaster. That could have been terrible. And that was the second time it happened to him. I think he's thinking a lot about that. You know, granted, he's in the top 16, really good. Congratulations to him. But he knows, he's a competitor. He knows that he needs to clean things up moving forward. Because obviously, top 16 is great. But for a competitor like him, who's really been super close to a huge breakout performance, he wants to go farther. And in order to do that, he just has to clean things up. So he has some time. Like we said, Top 16 won't be playing until about 8 p.m. Eastern. So he has some time to relax. And now, 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 this is Deoxys against Honeybee. Yes, and this is the uh, the two seated players in Pool D2. Again, you guys can follow along uh, on Smash.gg. This is the winner's finals. Deoxys being the high seed in this pool and Honeybee being the lower seed in this pool. Not the lowest, but basically seed two of this pool. They made it in perfect fashion, I guess, uh, through all the other uh, mentionable players in this pool, which is K7 Show Off Jenny and Forever Prince. King. Uh, so not sure what happened off stream, but this is the winner's finals here. Deoxys and Honeybee. Deoxys had a great start of this season, getting that top eight at Combo Breaker. Right. And uh, you know, Honeybee being an overall great NRS player, phenomenal flash in Injustice 1 and 2. Uh, great Devore player in Injustice, I'm sorry, in, in MKX, but not really getting the results that I think he wants. Again, we know how competitive he is. We know how confident he is. Maybe right. this last chance is a chance for him to, you know, solidify his name as a top player in Mortal Kombat 11. I think so too. And unfortunately, you know, we talk about the points all the time. Leading in the final combat, uh, Honeybee is... Uh, 23rd in the pro competition. So even if he wins this tournament, it's not really enough. No. Deoxys, on the other hand, completely 
solidified for the finals later on. But again, Honeybee, this is this could be a good statement for moving on if he chooses to go to LCQ. And Deoxys, with upgraded Jackie, completely dropped Garrus from what I understand, has been playing upgraded since right after ECT, even beforehand, but it's just completely mastered at this point. Yeah, I mean, he, he, and like you said, he is guaranteed for the final combat. So, you know, he really, Deoxys doesn't have much to lose, and that really affects how people play. I think so, but on the other hand, you know, if I'm in Deoxys' position, I want to play well, not just for the, you know, the mental stability of it, you want seeding points to move into the final. The, the fight is not over when you get qualified. No. You want to be in a solid position. But look at Honeybee right now with all this damage. Beautiful scout yes. on the grab there. And this will not kill. I don't think this is actually going to kill Jackie. One of the lower end damaging fatal blows. Yeah, especially after a really ending combo here. But hold on, this is very close. No, just like Big D called it and didn't kill. You were sweating a little bit when that no damage pain. bar was going I down. I stared so hard at the screen. I was like, is this gonna kill? I wasn't sure. That was a beautiful scout on the down four anti-air by Deoxys. Because otherwise that would have been a terrible way to start out. And again, another bait. This is the layers that upgraded brings to the table. Yeah. Very, like I mentioned before, very Hellboy-esque of Injustice 2. Yeah, a lot of, uh, or not even just Hellboy, but also uh, Blue Beetle, who the Oxus was, a great Blue Beetle player in the Injustice 2 days. Crushing blow here from Honeybee, getting the life lead. Now he doesn't really have to commit, but we all know upgraded Jackie is just, oh, no! 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 Listen, listen, the, both these guys have been here long enough, all right? Rule number one, when you sit down at a setup, you D Disconnect the controllers. D6. It is such a simple rule. I guess we're going to wait to see what the ruling is on that. I think they have to replay the game. I'm the, pretty sure that's what I the mean, ruling that's is. Also, if they cannot, if if they can't find out whose controller it is, the only way to get out of the screen is to restart the PS4. Hey, listen, the man. If they cannot find who pressed it, it could have been anyone who played on the stream station. And you can see Honeybee smiling there because he knows this is kind of my fault. <laughs> I should have desynced one as soon as I sat down here. And, you know, unfortunately, you know, we get so caught up in the hype of competing. You know, the adrenaline is running. You're not thinking of all these other factors outside of the game. So how are we going to play this out is what their body language is telling me here. Might as well desync the controllers now. And again, you guys can have a, it was one controller. It was one. It was the last person who was there then. All right, so listen, it was, it was who, who just played? It was Delhi Rebel and... Uh, I believe it was, and Bernanoni. Bernanoni. One so of them. One of those two is the culprit. But regardless, <laughs> it's not on them. It's always on the person at the setup. They're going to try to figure out what's going on here. I'm pretty sure they're going to end up replaying the game. Now, I'm going to be completely honest with you. I mean, you have to replay it at this point. The clock is ticking. You yes, yeah, yeah. You, you didn't even press start. You didn't even have the decency to press start and stop the bars from refilling or the clock from going down. And uh, I think they're talking with one of the TOs right now. Yeah. He's gonna have, you have to restart it at this point. I'm gonna be completely honest. Tell with you. me. If I'm in Honeybee's situation right now, I'm pretty happy. That's true. He was down around. He was down around. He got, honestly, Noob it's, it's a really good case Jack scenario Reeves. for him. It's I mean, I, I would be a little bit more happy. Uh, now, if I'm Deoxys, not exactly the happiest camper. He was on the verge of taking the first game. Granted, remember, we said this is winner's side, uh, winner's finals, winner's finals of this pool. So, winner gets in the top 16. And then yes. they just play on later. And at this level of play, mistakes like that can really hurt someone. Yes, they absolutely, absolutely can hurt anybody. And no matter how strong you are mentally, these things tick away at you little by little. Upgrade Jackie, great block of the low. It doesn't do a lot of damage, but it is very unsafe. But I don't know how Honeybee knew it was coming. Now listen, this is take two of game number one, and it is already <laughs> completely different than what we saw earlier. Uh, we saw Deoxys make the comeback in that first game with that very, very, you know, almost killing combo there with the Fatal Blow. No, I think Deoxys is looking for a roll forward there by Honeybee, but Honeybee was still blocking, holding onto it. A little manipulation of the trajectory here from Jackie Briggs. She is upgraded with lots and lots of jumping options. Beautiful reversal counter. It just stuffs the Fatal Blow. Hit that Fatal Blow. That Fatal Blow does not get that armor. Anybody's Fatal Blow until at least five frames of the startup. Exactly. And you know what? Honestly, this is playing out just like the first game. Used the Fatal Blow, got the first round. But we're already seeing adaptation out of Honeybee with Jackie's air options. Yeah, we're seeing a lot of down 
twos. We're seeing a lot of down fours under it. But he has to be careful of that because if Deoxys delays it at all, it will mess up the anti-air. And that's where the layers come into play. Yeah, the normals do have recovery. And while you're recovering from anything, you cannot block. So be very, very careful when you press those buttons. But right now, this looking like all Deoxys here. Deoxys completely in the driver's seat right now. Kicking Honeybee back into the corner. Honeybee just kind of micro-blocking there. Possibly looking for some kind of throw, but says, hey, I'm going to give him a throw of my own. I, I love how Deoxys played the end of that. He knows, like, Honeybee was more antsy than Deoxys was. He had a beautiful wife lead. Deoxys could just kind of sit there and wait for Honeybee to make his own mistake. There was no reason to overextend at all. Honeybee... As you could tell by his face, not exactly happy Round about that one. first game. But the idea is there. The matchup knowledge is there. He's just making a lot of mistakes on these anti airs and just really timing them wrong. Yeah, yeah. And again, you have to know what she's going to be doing. So it's not as simple. It's not a clean anti air. You have to know if she's going to come down right away or oh, delay it. This hurts. This hurts. I mean, this is a steamroll here from Deoxys. He is not letting up. He smells blood in the water. I mean, that was almost a flawless at that point. Not even 10% really taken off of his life. Deoxys on Round set two, point to move fight. into the top 16 on the winner's side. Honeybee really needs to make something happen, but Deoxys is playing so sporadic and just so out of control, it's hard to read the movement, and that's where you can excel as an upgraded player. Oh yeah, oh yeah, definitely. I love that flawless block up to you from Honeybee, able to kind of force Deoxys to just, you know, come off with some resources. And it's, it really is, like, he is just so hard to read with this movement that Honeybee is just forced to sit there and block. There's so many different options, and he's now getting caught again, left standing, forward three to follow up, Honeybee having the breakaway, but, I mean, this is pretty much curtains at this point. It absolutely is. Honeybee trying desperately to use that anti-air up shadow, but it wasn't enough. Jackson still got around it, and Deox is taking it. Honeybee with a slight little eye roll there, but Honeybee still is in it. He's going to the loser's finals of the lower bracket. See, we called it both the loser and the lower bracket right there in one <laughs> sentence. Uh, where he is going to be, you know, if I were to if, if I were to bet, he's either going to be playing K7 Show Off or Forever King because they are in that pool as well with them. Not sure who lost to who, but you guys can follow along by going to smash.gg, click on NEC20, then click on the Mortal Kombat 11 event, and you guys will see all the action that you missed uh, through the brackets. Now, Forever King is another player that uh, obviously we have not been able to see on stream yet. I would assume, especially now that he is in the loser side, he got ninth at ECT, which yes. is a really good showing. King has always been this just kind of unstoppable force consistently in the top 16s throughout multiple NRS titles. You know, he's I'm been playing a lot of Garrus, a few different variations here and there. But that's really it. We haven't seen like a huge breakout performance out of him in MK11 yet. Correct. Uh, Correct. And, and that's that's to his standards, really. You know, top 16s are great, but I know he definitely wants those top eights. So I'm curious to see how he's going to make it out of what sounds like a death pool. I mean, Deoxys, Honeybee, and Forever King being in that pool all together, only two people make it out. Yeah. That is yeah. pretty damn scary to me. It, it is. It is indeed scary there. And Forever King, you know, like you said, I feel like he's the... He's one of the best overall NRS players, especially if you're considering, you know, the timeline right before Mortal Kombat 11 came out. You know, phenomenal, uh, or, or pretty good MK9 player, phenomenal Injustice 1 player, phenomenal MKX player, phenomenal Injustice 2 player. But MK11, he's just not finding the same results that he had before. I mean, he was an E-League finalist that first year of Injustice 2, and he's just, he's not getting the results he wants. He's not getting the results he thinks he deserves. But we're going to be moving on. This is pool D4. D is right. the dog four. And uh, this is also the winner's finals of that pool. Scar being the high seed and uh, Samij being seed number two. Both of them starting on opposite ends of the bracket and meeting right here in the winner's finals. And like I said before, you guys can follow along on Smash.gg. The other people to mention in this pool are Punk, phenomenal Street Fighter four and five player. Uh, Kerbo, Kerbalicious, incredible cabal from the MK9 days. And uh, we have cool. definitely honorable mentions in Relaxate, Jackal, and Endekid. Not sure if Relaxate actually showed up to the to the, the pool or not. You guys are going to have to look on Smash.gg for that one. But either way, we have winner's finals here. Samij versus Scar. Scar being the first winner, winning combo breaker this year over Sonic Fox but just not getting the big wins after that. Now, there's a lot to talk about uh, in this set. Scar currently sitting in 11th in the pro himself. competition with 595 points. Samij is 12th with 455. 
After everything that we've already seen, you know, Tweedy being eliminated early, who's sitting at 10. But like we talked about earlier, those points are so close. Now we're taking a look. No, none of these guys want to be in losers right now. They both need to be placing super high. So looking at both of them, you know, Samich is definitely going to be rocking Cassie Cage. And then Scar has Kung Lao and has Sonya. We've been seeing a lot more Lao out of him. But like we said, there is so much riding on this. Do you want to make it into the finals and avoid the bloodbath that LCQ is going to be? I don't want to. I don't want to be that competitor. Want, if I was competing, man, I don't want to be at the LCQ. Especially now, uh, Intercontinental was this weekend as well. Shout out to Nivik for winning it, by the way. That was incredible. Great Boxing grand finals. Second. Um, and then Dizzy being there, not doing as well as he wants to, but he's still qualified for the finals. But VGY didn't do as well as he wanted. So he's going to be at LCQ, along with everybody else, all the other killers. But now, here we go. Getting us started with a down three into a back wrap. This is winner's finals of Pool D4. And starts playing a lot of Kung Lao as of lately. He didn't use Kung Lao at Combo Breaker. He was pretty much just sticking with uh, Scorpion. And uh, his other main is escaping me right now, but I remember him playing a lot of Scorpion there at Combo Breaker. Huge combo here from Samij, and Samij also playing a different character at Combo Breaker. He was really into Katana for a very long time, but I guess since then has decided to drop her and, and focus on Cassie Cage. And he, he's a loyalist to Cassie Cage at this point. He's been playing her for a good couple of months now. He just believes that this is the character for him. And he has been making it work. He's been doing really well with her. But again, Scar, just being the player that he is, it doesn't matter what character he's playing. He's going to be able to put up a fight. Yeah, Kung Lao is a very high risk, high reward character. I mean, he's. It, 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 it's, those down pokes into the, the raw spin are absolutely worth it for him because of how much damage that he can inflict on the right guess here. And that crush the giving him all that damage, 40% 40. and corner pressure to follow up with. Not the best way to start the round if you're Samij. 40% there, literally for very few resources here. Does have the crushing blow. And Samij is trying to catch him, you know, throwing out multiple down threes by counter poking with forward four. Scar's not biting. He's no. playing super solid right now. Not overextending, not being super button happy. And that's why he's already sitting on almost a one game lead. But now, Samij, you can tell he's starting to get in his head a little bit. We've seen a lot of forward grabs. You know the shimmy is going to be there eventually. But right now, we're here controlling some space. A little fall that spot here. Yep, yep. All it takes is right one opening. That. All it takes is one opening. And then with Samiz, you know, he's contesting the neutral with a lot of down fours, which is good. Cassie has a phenomenal down four. But there's nothing else that he's really doing with that. It's a lot of one ones that Scar is not biting the shimmy on it. Nope. So there's no damage really being put out besides a couple down fours. Meanwhile, Scar, you know, dishing out 40% for a corner combo is just that's the whole game right there but that's what it is man wow. kung lao Cassie does Cage. so much damage kung lao hits like a truck and you know, one of the most mobile characters especially Solid. because sometimes you're just so scared of the power the priority of that dive kick that you just say okay i guess i'm just gonna let him keep jumping in and that's when kung lao can party that's when he can play he doesn't have any traditional mix-up in the sense of overheads or lows but a very great throw game a very great throw strike the stri game. yeah the the striker grab game is really what kung lao is all about but you know what if i'm samij i want to start looking for those flawless blocks on the jump ins to keep him out of the air and then control the ground game like cassie cage is known to do yeah yeah definitely definitely so let's see if samij can make that adjustment just like big d said looking for the counter hit there so it does lead to a decent crushing blow and uh, you know, Samiz being a little bit careful there, uh, waiting for Scar to jump. Great anti-air there. And Scar trying to dive kick over those little low gunshots. Now they're just low because of the visuals. They do not hit as low. They actually hit as mid to the counter hit here. 24% in the favor of Samiz. And that's a big punish there. But Scar doesn't convert into more damage, possibly thinking he was going to go into a breakaway. And that's going to be a shot confirmed there for Samiz. Samiz fighting back, adjusting to the situation, and showing everybody why he deserves to be here today. And this is exactly the adaptation I want to see. He's playing a lot more defense. If he gets his anti airs and he gets the damage and he backs off, that that's why he's playing so much better this time. Much more patient on the mind games with the orbiting hat if Scar spends both the meter. Oh. And just playing a lot more slippery. And again, not overextending, staying back, keeping his distance. I love how comfortable Scar is to so just flawless blocking as many projectiles as he possibly can. It doesn't seem like it's going to be avoiding a lot of damage, but that little chip avoidance is going to add up in those nail biter situations. 
again, controlling the space with those down fours. Now, he's forcing Scar to stay grounded, which is what you want to do against the Kung Lao. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Now he's Stop off him. Oh, him. oh, it hurts. It hurts. A great whiff punish here by Samiji. Drops the ender, wants to put him in a restand situation, but instead dropped it and gave up a lot of damage and got no restand situation. And you see, it, you saw Samiji getting a little bit antsy right there in the, in the up close range. Yeah. He decided, just back off. It's been paying him a lot. Giving him a lot of distance. Yeah, back off. Don't make the guess on his wake up. Because especially because Kung Lao has, I think, in my opinion, one of the best up threes in this game. But we haven't really been seeing Scar doing it because Samij is just backing off. Again, hit confirm into the high gunshot. Samij tying this up one to one. Now th this is the Samij that I'm used to seeing. And now Scar, he's going right back into it with Kung Lao. I, w I honestly wasn't really expecting to switch characters, although we do know him obviously winning combo breaker with Sonya. But he's been putting all this work in the Kung Lao, and he's not playing bad. He just needs to be a little bit more patient. Yeah. yeah. Maybe throw out a couple more grabs. Samij is not biting the shimmies. Let's be real about that. He has not gone shimmy once. Yeah. So go for the grabs. Go for the grabs, test his uh, ability to react. And uh, throws in this game are, you know, you have to tech forward throws differently from back throws. So it's always a very strong tool. But you got to watch out because they do connect as highs. So if a character is just ducking and not blocking, that could lead into a lot of damage not in your favor. I'm loving these down one and standing one anti-airs out of Smeej. You know, you rarely see that out of a lot of the characters that we see on stream, but Smeej has a timing with it. And against Kung Lao, his jump-ins are really strong. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Very incredible, incredible jump-ins. Go. Again, counter poking with 4-4, stopping the multiple pokes in their tracks. Yeah, yeah. So he's just waiting for that frame advantage and going right into the mid. And Cassie has some one of the best mids in this game. Uh, so it's really tough to, you're always gonna take a risk if you're looking to not respect those plus frames that Cassie Cage has put herself in, whether that's blocking something that's negative. Oh, hold on, pressure you flow. Gonna go into a big combo. Is she gonna break away? Yes, has no resources at all. Oh, it's just the background. That was so, so gutsy to pull that off, but still goes for it. I was ready for Scar to just fatal blow. I was yeah. like, you know what? Just let it rip. At this point, 1-1, one, one, just let it rip. Get that first round on the board. But now Samij sitting on set point to advance to winner's top 16 and has all of pretty much the rest of the stage to work with. Can back up wherever he sees fit. Yes, he definitely can. So Scar needs to make the connection here, possibly cut off that real estate, going for a back throw, as I was literally about to say. Now turning the tide. Samij is the one in the corner, now with limited real estate and limited wiggle room. And then even then, Scar got that escape fail loaded, so a back grab will do a lot of damage. But knowing Scar and what I've seen, he likes going for forward grabs. Because when this that... opponent is going to keep teching back grab. It's just, it's pretty much free at that point. Yes, yes it is. Let's see. Hull, get the forward four here. Now she's going to have no breakaway for the next combo. But Scar not having any offensive amplification bars available, not able to really make it hurt. Back throw, escape fail, but she does not have any crushing blows here. I get crushing blows are very specific to every character and every variation. Not all the characters have throw crushing blows, but Kung Lao does have the back one still loaded, might I add. And it, you know what? In a best case scenario, Scar doesn't have to use it. And it doesn't look like he's going to have to use it. These one two ones all the way across the board. And that was perfect. Yeah, right there, that was Samij looking for throw over and Boy, over yeah. again. And Scar not giving it to him, not taking the risk. Because again, every throw you see is a huge, huge risk as they only hit his highs. Great dive kick there, getting right under. That whole the last three, four rounds, Samij did not put himself in that situation. But Scar was still ready to react like nothing. Dive kicking over that low gunshot. And then now Samij got the grab tech on that grab. So now the, the escape field is gone. He yeah. can start over. He can be a little bit more comfortable. But even now, it's starting to get a little bit more aggressive. You know Scar wants to be able to move into the top 16. And the only way to do that is to start more suffocating pressure. Yeah, so he's yeah. working his way in patiently, but still working his way in. And the background of the fall, there's no doubt on mine, he's moving in. Definitely moving in, getting the forward throw, but you see Samij not even trying to go for the text at all. We know he has the ability to react, but he's saying it's not worth it. It's not worth it to get the crushing blow loaded up. Great respect there from Scar holding on a block. Not quite enough yet. Scar needs to find the opening here. He does have fatal blow. Can he use it? He needs to be very careful here. It is almost in chip out territory. Gets the back grab. Fatal no blow territory. Fatal blow territory. Where is it? There it is! You knew that it was coming! It was right there, and poor Samiz! It is, that is the face of a dream sent to the grave.
not only did he have you know exactly the right amount of health to lose to a fatal blow but scar also barely had any health himself so even if samij did press buttons and connect with the armor it would have hit him out of there but it was just absolutely perfect and it just samij didn't see it coming <laughs> he didn't see it coming and fatal blow that fatal blow is very very punishable in this game Listen, man, every time I see Fatal Blows like that connect, I feel like I got hit by it. And that really felt like oh. I just got hit by oh, it. Oh, it hurts. Unfortunate. That is probably, like, one of the worst ways to be sent to losers. You know, they both played super well. They did. They did. They absolutely did. But that did. little missed scout on the Fatal Blow, literally, that cost him top 16 at that point. He's moving into losers. He's not out of it just yet. But that, he's going to have to shake that off. I mean, you have no other choice. It's either shake it off or keep playing on tilt oh. and don't play to your potential. And Samid can come back from this. He can adapt to the situation, no problem at all. And uh, again, guys, that was uh, Pool D4 Winners Finals. So Samid's still in it. He's going to be going to Losers Finals where he is either going to be meeting, uh, well, actually, I'm sorry, where he's going to be meeting Kerbalicious in the losers finals, which is a rematch from the winner's semis where Samij came out the victor. Now, uh, Kerbo can do this, but that's gonna be possibly a little bit later when we see it in the losers final stream. Right now, coming up for your viewing pleasure, we have Rewind, uh, who is a, an EVO champion in Injustice 2, and he's gonna be going up against up and comer, uh, the mighty unjust. I didn't see who he actually won but uh, on the, the second seat of this pool was Kevo Reborn. So I, I don't know Aaron if this is winner's Black. finals or not. Yes, it is winner's finals. So Kevo Reborn did not get his way Desert here. He's possibly in the lower bracket. Now the Mighty Unjust is a Jersey boy. I'm very familiar with him. He From does your come, neck of the woods, yeah. Yes, he does come to all the locals that I do put on and he's actually very, very, grateful for them. He says, I, I love being part of a competitive scene. I never had this before because we didn't really have this for Injustice 2. And he, he's a great, great supporter. Him and his uh, twin brother that you actually saw. El Kukui, right? El Kukui, yeah. yes. That I is, was like, they look exactly the same. They are twin brothers, but they are not identical twins, believe it or not. Really? Yes, uh, they are. That's fool me, man. Yeah, I, me too. I'm just like, there's no way you guys are not identical. Well, you know what? They're both putting on a really good showing this weekend. Yes. And now Rewind, he got 17th at ECT. Yes. Obviously not what he wanted, you know. He's at ninth in the pro competition with 670 points. Johnny that is Cage. not a comfortable position, especially moving yeah. into this weekend. Again, a lot of the upsets have helped these players that are still in, you know. Noob Jelly, Silence. Jelly Jiggler, formerly known as Tweety, is Silence. eliminated super Dungeon. early. Didn't even get 17th place. Nope. So there's zero points to be had on his end. Now Rewind is going to go ahead with... I believe I just saw Johnny Cage on the screen. Could be, could be. I wouldn't be surprised, but the Mighty Unjust does play a lot of characters. Uh, usually characterized as playing a lot of top tier characters. So I don't know which one of these guys are going with. Looks like it's Rewind from sitting on the player one side if these guys are doing it correctly. No, is this a... No, this is, Rewind is definitely playing Cage. Yeah. Unjust is going with seeing double Noob Saibot. Maybe he thinks it's a little bit of a counter pick. I can see how, because Noob Saibot plays so well in the mid range and full screen, Johnny still wants to be up close on you. Yes, great use of the interactable there from the mighty Unjust and Justice Boys. Just getting right out of there, back into the mid screen and away from that corner pressure. Beautiful down two here by Rewind. Connecting the throw afterwards. Gonna be tossing him a little bit farther away or possibly trying to go for the mix up there not going for the, the towards the corner throw. And uh, this is a uh, showstopper Johnny Cage. So he has he doesn't have the arcing fireballs, but instead has the straight fireballs here. So very, very different from the Johnny Cages we've seen. I don't uh, know about that breaker, man. Fight. I'm going to be really honest with you. I think that was a big mistake. I don't know if it was intentional, but now he needs to play really safe, not having breakaway for pretty much half of this round. Yeah, no, no, it's definitely going to be tough because that breakaway cooldown is very, very oppressing. It comes back super, super slow. Great little low uh, amplified uh, shadow here from uh, the Mighty Unjust. And this is the mid range that Noob Saibot wants to play in. It's controlling that it's controlling that footsie range and then being able to come in with that forward two when you think it's the right time. Exactly, exactly here. And that's what we're seeing. Great throw escape here by the Mighty Unjust, knowing exactly which way Rewind was trying to, and again, calling it out perfectly. Uh, 
specifically teching against which direction the throws are, and that gets him the momentum he needed to just back Johnny Cage off and finish him off with those low shadows. And he's just locking Rewind down, right? Like, it, it's a little bit of the control at the mid-range, but even off close, he's doing a lot of mind games off of pokes with the low slide and everything else to follow. Down one's in the grabs when he's trying to condition Rewind, and it's all starting to pay off. Now, granted, being Showstopper Cage, when you hit that Fatal Blow territory, that's when it starts getting really scary. But on just no doubt, especially that it's the third round, has that Shadow Tackle Crushing Blow, and that hurts. Oh yeah, it definitely does. Uh, third round usually is guaranteed for Noob, as long as it's not a, a very one-sided fight in any of the rounds. But, you know, another thing that's very scary about Johnny Cage is all the unbreakable damage he has access to in this variation. Taking his time. Nice patience by Rewind. This is a really close game right now. Rewind, nice little scout. No punish with the Shadow Kick on that back one grab. Now, Unjust just starting to, just kind of starting to get overwhelmed by these little bits of strings, and that is no doubt going to close out the first game. Rewind, very smart. Yes, yeah, definitely a, a textbook play there. And the Mighty Unjust showing a lot of uncertainty uncertainty here with that body Same language, uh, especially or even just the in-game body Cage. language going right into the Fighter Seven Select, going Seven. to Aaron Black, which I believe was his original main back in May as soon as the game came out. But the Mighty Unjust has been known to play various different characters. Uh, I'm actually a big fan of his Cetrion. His Cetrion, I think, is one of his best characters. He is also very familiar with Gyrus pretty much any character he feels he needs to learn in order to win uh, all these different matchups across the board. And I feel like he might be spreading himself out too thinly here to get the results that he knows he deserves. That's a big whiff punish there. You don't want to whiff that whole thing against somebody. And Rewind was ready to just get up at the perfect time. I've always been the biggest advocate that, you know, when in doubt, just stick with your guns. Even though the matchup might not be the most favorable, especially, you know, Aaron Black against Johnny, I've heard is not the greatest, but you have that comfortability that you've had by playing the character for so long. I wouldn't ex I wouldn't be surprised if we see Unjust take us to a game three, but whipping a down three against Rewind is not the way to do it, forcing himself off of that defensive meter. And now this is just what Cage is known to do. Plus frames across the board, striker grab. Oh, great jump in, especially, and look at that recognition there, unfortunately. Whoa, hold on, no, didn't get there in time for the punish, and Rewind was ready to block. What a little scramble there at the end. I mean, I thought it was a great call out from the Mighty Unjust, knowing that the breakaway was coming, throwing down the acid for the DOT afterwards, but Rewind played it perfectly after that. And then even now, you see him going for a lot of down fours and trying to, Pretty much trying to auto ship him with Aaron Black's 2-1 string. Rewind has, honestly, some of the best defense in the game. You rarely see him get opened up by shimmies. Great reaction there with that Shadow Kick punishing that acid drop here from Aaron Black. A lot of them just like to drop that acid all willy-nilly like that. But you can't do that against a caliber player like Rewind. Oh, unfortunate drop there with the standing two. That could have done a lot of damage, but honestly, he has such a comfortable life lead. The corner positioning, nice grab tech by Unjust, but this most certainly will be curtains for Unjust on the winner's side. And Rewind making quick work, and we'll be seeing him in the top 16 winners as Unjust continues to fight for his tournament life. Yes, yes, Rewind making it out of uh, D3 pools. Uh, Scar making it out of uh, D4 pools with that crazy fatal blow play, and uh, Deoxys making it out of D2 pools over Honeybee. So the only one that we have left to, the only winner's finals we have left of the pools uh, is the pool that Dragon and Splash are in. Oh, it, God. So, uh, but we don't know. We don't know if the upsets have happened yet. Right. You right. guys can follow along on smash.gg or wait for the results just like we are. Uh, but that's... That was a very, or D, the D1 pool was a very, I would say a very stacked pool. Dragon being seed number one, Splash being seed number two. Oh. Yes, and I was wait, just wait about to mention, okay, the mentioned, the, the honorable mentions in these pools are Silver Eye, who's at a top eight at CEO, Pulse, who knocked Rewind into the lower bracket at ECT, Drifter, who I would say is a pretty good underdog, capable of knocking anybody out on his best day. And uh, I would mention Tom Brady in this one, but uh, apparently he was a no-show here at uh, at NEC, even though he did register. Yeah. But again, uh, just looking at this pool, it is so stacked with so much talent. Like I said, Dragon, Splash, Silver Eye, Pulse, Drifter, 
and would have been Tom Brady. But here in the winner's finals, I believe this is the winner's finals. Hopefully you guys, yes it is, confirmed here from production. Pulse, Pulse coming from New York City. He's been going to absolutely every local he can go to. He goes to Next Level Battle Circuit. He goes to Coach Steve's tournament every other Tuesday in the Bronx. And he's attended every single Mortal Kombat New Jersey event in West Orange and North Bergen, New Jersey. Let's let's he's talk a, about a, Pulse a for a second at, his, at ECT. Six, yeah, so 17th, which is honestly really good. He pulled an upset against Rewind. That was what really helped him get that breakout performance. That's a very memorable thing to do if you can uh -huh. beat Rewind, who, like we said, you know, we Evo champion for Injustice 2, multiple top eights across the board. But Pulse usually only plays Aaron Black, which we are definitely seeing right here. 52 for our pickup, which is usually the standard. And speaking of standards, Dragon and Cetron, I mean, we're, we're looking at pretty much the same thing. Yeah, no, Waiting on Sindel, though, as he has been <laughs> super vocal about. Well, I wonder if that's going to affect his performance this, uh, this weekend, because he's been playing nothing but Sindel. And I, I think I remember seeing somebody tweet as a joke that I, I got so many games in with Dragon this weekend, but he refused to play anyone else besides I will <laughs> I will tell you right now, I was in the hotel room with Dragon and a few others, and they were playing casuals, and he was playing Sindel. That is not helping anybody. <laughs> Listen, man, when you love a character, I was doing the same thing at DreamHack uh, Montreal with Nightwolf, all right? I understand what it's like to love a character, but I think you have a good point. He's been playing a lot of Sindel. Mm -hmm. And he's already qualified for the finals. So the pressure is really off for him. But it's Dragon. He's a competitive player. He wants to win. Oh, yeah. he want, after all the second places that he has been through. And that is just, that is not something people want to deal with. Granted, second is awesome. But for someone like him who has won an Evo as well, and millions of top eights, he wants to win a tournament. But Sonic always seems to stand in Dragon's way. But now let's see if Dragon has any rust in his gameplay. Let's see, let's see. Pulse is a great test. Like I said, a very admirable player, very talented. And if you're able to knock down Rewind, you're able to knock down anybody. Chucking uh, or shooting at full range here from that rifle. Now you guys can always keep track of how many bullets are in Aaron Black's rifle by looking on the bottom right of the screen. The bullet count is currently at five, and I believe at the match start, it starts at eight bullets. It does start at eight bullets. And also, you know what the interesting thing is that uh, Dragon plays Hayate a lot. They're almost considered online training partners. They uh -huh. play all the time. So he knows this matchup. At the same time, Pulse has a pretty solid life lead right now. Playing the neutral really well, taking a step back, not getting into that natural barrier of range where that's really most of the mind games at that point. Yeah, yeah, it definitely is all the mind games at that point. I love how uh, Pulse decided to get through the, the, the sparks there, the fire sparks or the fire lasers uh, by going into the, uh, the, the, the stance. Oh, that was such a beautiful whip punish with the 1-1, but does, didn't confirm in the fatal blow. And now Pulse has a chance to steal this round away. He's gonna keep it safe with the amplified scud shot. Needs to be careful here. Nice block on the 1-1-2. Dragon just being nice and suffocating. Tons of pressure coming in. Both of them are honestly just afraid to hit buttons. And that should be able to... No! Not just yet! And, but a meeting should be able to do it. And the poison. So smart by Pulse. That was almost a tragedy. I mean, it was, there was so much patience there at the end, and I feel like Dragon almost did not believe that Pulse would not let go of that block button. Pulse is one of the most patient Aaron Black players I've ever seen, and very rarely will dish out that very unsafe slide. And now, Dragon, we've seen him a lot of times, you know, obviously he's been playing Cetron since the very beginning. He's kind of switched more towards an aggressive style. Nice punish by Pulse. Huge crushing blow. Dragon's going to have to eat all this damage as Breakaway has now just become available. And this is, this is really impressive from Pulse right now. He just seems to be controlling the map from the, in every single range. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Dragon not really getting it until he gets right into Pulse's face. And I feel like even though Dragon has a lot of uh, projectile options, Cetrion can also deal with anything up close. Oh, and the trade obviously working on Dragon's favor, getting that second round. Now, that crushing blow is what helped Dragon secure it, 100%. So Pulse needs to be... He can take a breath of fresh air knowing that crushing blow is gone, but he still needs to be careful throwing out the whips. Because at the end of the day, Cetron may not do a ton of damage, but the map control after her combos is what, where she really thrives. Oh, yeah. Definitely where she thrives, 100%. Oh, going into the stance and just canceling right out of that. The scud shot. There you go, amplifying it. One of the best projectiles as it travels almost instantly over to the other side while nullifying projectiles. Whoa, I thought he thought he was going to jump there. 
but Pulse isn't that kind of player. Interesting kind of read there, but definitely did not pay off. Oh, even gets the crushing blow. Is Dragon gonna break away? It doesn't have enough meter in time. It has to eat all 30%. And now Pulse slowly walking away with a life lead. That oh. was a huge whiff. It was, but he does have breakaway. He can get out of this. Dragon doesn't have, oh, hold on. No, he's deciding to eat it. Even though Cetron is one of the most well-rounded characters in this game, the one thing she does lack is overall combo damage. She's definitely a little bit weaker on the combo potential, but the mind game's falling off when you keep your opponent standing is where she thrives. Yes. And I think Dragon is, is he really antsy to throw out any sort of zoning tools because Pulse has that fatal blow at the ready. Oh, he, get, he got hit by two lasers back to back. And you know, other than that, Pulse played it very, very well, going toe to toe with Dragon. So he needs to stay focused. He doesn't need to go into tilt mode. He needs to just stay calm, and, and stay the course. Hopefully not switching away from Aaron Black, but that's just my opinion. I'm not the one down there sweating bullets and playing uh, against one of the, the most defensive, uh, one of the most incredibly defensive players I have ever seen to play an NRS game. And I, that would is like to see, I would like to see Pulse stick with Aaron Black. He is going to stick with Aaron Black. His defense is where it needs to be to go up against a Cetrion player like Dragon. You know, Cetrion is one of those characters that really tests your defense. Yeah. And if you don't have the patience to do that, she's going to walk all over you. And that's where it showed at the very end of that third round. He lost his patience a little bit, didn't respect the frame trap of the geyser, and then just that was curtains for that Fart. entire game. He can make the adaptations and take us to a game three, but Dragon being the person that he is, while defensive in the first game, we just saw him dash up and do a back wrap. Like, yeah. this is his time where he likes to switch things up, and Cetron is one of those characters that you can play her in a million different ways. Yeah, yeah, definitely one of those characters. Like I said before, you can, you can back off or you can go right up close. She's got the buttons to contest with some of the best normals in this game. Breaking away, utilizing those two bars, coming off those resources, but being very, and once you come off those two bars, you're very susceptible to any kind of wake up. But like I said, Pulse is very rarely going to dive into that low, uh, unsafe slide. But either way, the first time he did it, Dragon was ready to block and ready to punish. It. It's just the presence of mind, right? Like, just, just to be that kind of competitor that, that Dragon is, to know that eventually it's going to be there. So always look out for it. And now Dragon obviously has a strong life lead, but Pulse with the Fatal Blow, that full stream game is not safe for Dragon. No, no, definitely is not. Oh, this is risky stuff, and just like that, the Fatal Blow reacting with just the pressing, with, with just the push of two buttons. It's so smart, man. He took that little step back, knew Dragon was gonna overextend after the 1-1 got blocked, and just went for the Fatal Blow. Sometimes you gotta spend it in the first round. It doesn't need to be that match round ender. Two. Fight. And here we go. Now Pulse, all oh, the autocorrect got the that, was good. <laughs> that, that was actually really smart because it was going to cover the option that Pulse knew was coming, which was the far teleport, which gives Cetrion some of the best mobility in the game. Not only does she have access to the teleport on the ground in the air, but she also has one of the best back dashes in this game. Pulse swinging for his life, getting hit by the wall that Cetrion throws up there. And we're seeing, you know, we watch all the time, you know, Dragon play with Cetrion and how it's always been in the beginning about the natural barriers, but now it's just with one once. The normals are what the real mind game is. Now Pulse trying to go for that grab. He does have an escape fail loaded. That will 100% kill Dragon right now. Oh yeah, yeah, he definitely will. Hold on, getting uh, the escape failed as Pulse thought. Dragon was possibly gonna throw him back into the mid screen, but Dragon's just being malicious right now. Hit confirming right into this fatal blow. I think that's gonna be enough here for this round. It does do, it does scale a lot, but it was so quick into the combo. It's pretty much gonna be doing raw damage as we see there, nearly 35% and Pulse did not have the life to withstand that blow at all. No, that, and that was super intelligent by Dragon. Just confirm in the Fatal Blow, get the guaranteed kill, and just move on. Cetron having a slower Fatal Blow, you need to use it in those combos, but beautiful crushing blow there. A ton of damage leading in the setup. Can we talk about how Aaron Black is an incredible mid with that back two? That back two string just kind of, oh, hold on, getting right under the fire laser. But I think Pulse really thought Dragon was gonna use that breakaway, and Dragon said, no, I'm gonna hold on to it because I know you know I think I have breakaway. And that's why we are behind the table and not playing. <laughs> <laughs> so now moving on back to it, forcing Dragon off of that meter. Pulse is very close, closing out the second round. Going with a little bit, just keeping it safe, going for the scud shot, the Amplified, and now the Amplified guys are on Dragon. The 
is he needs to be careful. One little mistake. That was a huge mistake. Talk about little mistake, but he does have breakaway. He can go out. Dragon looking for the down two, but nobody was home just yet. Hitting the back two, but getting stopped here by Dragon. And Dragon going to be taking this over. Pulse moving on to the top 16 on the winner's side. What? What a nail biter of a set. I mean, you know, if you're Dragon going into this, knowing how high you're seated, how prestigious your, your, you know, your, your whole career is, you're going up against Pulse. It should be like nothing, but Pulse really stuck it in there, and it was so back and forth, man. It was so close. It, it was a really good showing by Pulse, but Dragon just kind of having that presence of mind to contest the neutral with 1-1, even on block. Like we said, it has become the the main mind game oh, yeah. of Cetrion. It's not the natural barrier, but the normals, and that's why Dragon is so successful. Throwing out that 1-1 to contest pretty much a lot of Aaron Black's buttons, that's why he was able to close out that round. And we'll be seeing Dragon in the top 16 winners despite all the Sindel practice. <laughs> hey, you know what? Sometimes you have to take a little hiatus, and you as a competitor know how good does it feel to, to just take that little break? Either you're playing a different character for a little bit and then you come back to your main, or sometimes you're playing a different game altogether and you come back to the game refreshed. It's almost like you took a, 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 a metaphorical nap and you're just waking up. I mean, honestly, you're right. Like, you you need to kind of have that little bit of a, a break in order to reassess everything. And you come back with a complete, fresh mental state, and that's why you see some players, like, being con continuously successful. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we saw it with uh, Scar in the Injustice, uh, the second year of Injustice 2 at the Grand Finals. He said uh, he was playing nothing but Red Dead for, for weeks, and he had a, a phenomenal performance, a, a great performance that a lot of people didn't think he was capable of. So sometimes taking the break is okay. And speaking of taking breaks, we're going to be taking a break right now. Big D, thank you so much for joining me. Absolutely. I had an absolute blast, but Big D, take it away. Everybody, we'll be seeing you later. Make sure to not go anywhere. Topic scene is going to be coming up right after this break.